I think one or two years ago. Wow. And and we we um we got two well known callers to come up at the same time. And so they had never called together before. So that was really neat. Is that sixty years with the same caller or, no, or no. do you the, the, the no. group itself this group itself. Right, yeah. So we brought yeah. Jerry Justin and Murray Few in together. I thought Jerry had retired. He did. That was a, like I said, it was a couple of years ago. Just we got him oh, just okay. before he retired. He retired. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now Jeff's been calling same club for all that time. Wow. Well, oh, the same wow. caller, which is a oh. huge commitment. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the club, oh. but if it was the caller, that's major. Yeah, he's been calling longer than that. He's um he's already had his fifty years of calling, but yeah, same caller, same club. Because I think in the States you change callers all the time or you uh, contract them a lot of places. Where in, where in Australia, we more or less have the same caller pretty well. Or we, most clubs have just got the same caller. Mm. And we'll have guests. But. I always used to say that callers never retire. They just call less. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, I... I had a uh, an accident that I broke my ankle about oh six years ago, and after several surgeries, I I can't I can't dance anymore, and I don't have the stamina to haul equipment around. So I said, well, I called for forty years, had a good run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could I, always I go zoom. Ankle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, he could. And. I had, I had a problem. I can't carry my equipment, so my dancers carry my equipment, and I sit. Well, Bob, my problem down here in in Oklahoma is I don't know any callers or dancers. I'm not going to walk up to them and ask a stranger, "Excuse me, will you help me haul my equipment?" No. Well, if they were a square oh. dancer, they'd probably say, "Sure." That's okay. Yeah, we we did we did it well, for our caller that required knee surgery. Sure. I don't have yeah. to ask anybody. They see me struggling and they come rushing to help. Well, gosh, a lot of clubs have some people uh, just, uh, you know, designated for the night to, uh, you know, uh, help the caller. And they just like hang out waiting for the guy to show up and they run out there and, you know, grab the equipment and everything. I gave, I gave badges out that said caller hauler. <laughs> Well, Bill, I think you just ran out of excuses. <laughs> so. No, I do. I have one really important excuse too, and that is the fact that my wife came. At, unfortunately, was diagnosed a couple, three and a half years ago with stage five kidney failure. Right. Now that's the bad mm. news. The good news is, about a month ago, she had a kidney transplant. And she's oh, doing fantastic. great. And she's doing great. Yay. Good. That means you can go back to calling now. I want she's well, well. That means I'd have to buy all new equipment because I sold it all. <laughs> the only thing I have in my equipment right now, Ross, yeah. is what I'm talking on right now, my laptop computer, which still has my music on it. So find me an yeah. amplifier and a speaker and I'm ready to go. You're in luck because Hilton has a brand new one called The Beast. Oh, the Beast. yeah. The beast. Yeah. How many microphone inputs, Tony? Four. 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 And it's wireless. It's Bluetooth. Yep. I've I've seen it. I've held dare it. I, I it, but I've held it. Dare I've I seen, ask I've how much it costs? Them. Around three thousand. Thank you. I think I'll pass. <laughs> well, now that's the good. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that um, I'm, I don't know if you guys are aware that I'm my wife started this grand square incorporated gsi and uh, we decided to go ahead and we bought one and we're going to do an auction and i'm going to sell 40 tickets at a hundred dollars a piece and we're going to draw it probably at the national convention in jackson assuming they have it and we should make we'll make a thousand dollars on the deal and we're going to take that and buy a projector to use at color schools because we do a lot of color schools so and we need a projector to do all these nice powerpoint presentations we have more info to follow. I just I just got a message from Kip trying to get his mic sorted out. It's not coming through. Oh, do you hear uh, me now? 
Bill? Is that you, Kip? Does anybody hear me? What? I can hear you, Kip. Hear you. What? I'm a novice with all this electronic stuff. You know that. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that haven't met Kip, he's a new caller. He just started out a couple weeks ago. So uh, <laughs> yes. picking it up fairly quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> often, I've often felt that way. I can tell you right now, right now, your land is calling a heck of a lot more than I am. Uh, well, Kip, yeah, when but, you started calling, didn't you, use a, didn't you use a megaphone? <laughs> that was his grandfather. Well, when I, when, I, when I, Kip started calling, they didn't. He didn't use even a rolled up paper because they didn't have paper back then yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's wrong on so many levels. Oh, my God. <laughs> but don't worry. If, if I don't Kip, he's going to give me a lot better than I give him. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> no, I don't dare do that, Mel. You're doing such a wonderful job here with all of these uh, training sessions. Uh, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually surprised that, that it, you know, it's still going. We get a lot of people coming back in, but uh, we've been going now for... But just almost two years now with Skype and with uh, Messenger and with the individual and then with COVID since, uh, what, February here that we started these on, on um, Zoom. And it's just it's just going great guns. And I want, my God, the support you get from everybody like you and Tony and everybody else just coming in to, wow, it, it's, it's something that is just unforeseen and unprecedented in the world of learning how to call for square dance callers, especially newer callers. Well, I'll tell you, Mel, even though I'm not calling anymore, I enjoy the camaraderie and coming in and, and, and seeing what you're doing with the, uh, helping these new callers, you, and I could say you and Kip and Tony, uh, are all doing a fantastic job of, uh, of, uh, bring, of getting these callers into the swing of things. Hey, even us new uh, old callers need help. I don't. <laughs> and some, and some, of us, some of us old callers are just flat out beyond help, but that's another story. Hey, I'd like to squeeze in a real quick hi to Kip and to Tony and everybody else. Hey, Daryl, how you doing? Uh, uh, better than I deserve, Tony. <laughs> oh, talk about fossils. Hey, hey, oh, hey oh, 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 oh. I, I represent oh. that story. You said I was bad? <laughs> I'm going to duck under the table here. It's getting rough. I'm going to shut up before I get any deeper into it. But nice to see you. We've got about five. I, will, I will be here, so don't put on me even though you don't see me. Susie but and Simon, how are you We've got doing? about five minutes before we start. Okay. So before we I'm get gonna... on here. Talking is, about old fossils again. Does <laughs> anybody want to record that has not got recording privileges off? Hmm? Oh, I think I'm recording. You you may already be. I was just saying, if you wanted to record, just let Mark or myself know, and we can find you in this mass of people, and uh, click the record button. Well, hello, Kip. Howdy. Is that Bill? That's me. Hey, how's Lynn doing? Lynn is doing great. She had a month ago. She had the kidney transplant. Oh, fantastic! About and time. She's doing. She's oh yeah, really. Got her kidney from a 23 year old deceased male. And uh, she, to quote what she said to me, she is, she's pissing like a racehorse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't Lynn, I can't clean that up anymore. It's like <laughs> Lynn you. would never use that language, Bill. Well, uh, oh, don't BS on that, and I don't mean my initials. <laughs> Uh, good morning from Japan. I'm Hiroshi Nakagawa. Hello. 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 Good morning. Here is a 7 a.m. Oh. Good morning and welcome. How are you, Lars? Hello. I'm fine. He's doing very good. Looks well. <laughs> yeah. yeah you Yes. Congratulations on getting over it so quick. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I could awake early because uh, 
I'm just uh, only two hours sleeping because oh I, I, I wrote oh no. I wrote an uh, email to the Kora Lab home office about the uh, oh. annual general meeting on March 27th. Mm -hmm. It's all open time with uh, 3 a.m. in Japan in, in the midnight. It's a crazy time. So that yeah. I asked to the home office to change, the, to rearrange the time zone. <laughs> so that it's a, a late time. Yeah. I, I slept in the four o'clock. We, we have that with all of the Color Lab meetings. They're either at 1 a.m., 5.30 a.m. or 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> So it's, it's actually good for me because it bounces between the 1 a.m. session, then we've got Don Beck at 2.30, then I've got a break until 5, and then from 5 till 7, and then I'm on at 7. So they all sort of fit in there as long as they don't run over. It pretty much <laughs> takes up my Sundays for the next one. It's not real high on your priorities, is it, Mel? Sorry? Sleep really isn't high on your priorities. Uh, have you ever known it to be, Tony? <laughs> I want to know what he does in his spare time. It... it, it it, it seems to me the last time I, I was hanging out with you was uh, you were the one with the bags under your eyes in the morning. I remember that. That's been a long time ago. It was. Or was that or was that just the Canadian beer? Might have been. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh okay. To, to arrange to arrange this time zone is a very difficult for the worldwide. But uh, this this event is uh, also one of uh, good, good time arrangement for the worldwide. Well, that is I think. That so that I, I attempt the, this this sample to to the home office. Yeah. Well, this is why we uh, called this the Ash series of caller training because yeah. Ash stands for Australian Sensible Hours. Yeah. Mel, it's time. And we're it over, I was just and we're over I was, 50. I was just hitting the, the admit button. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another one of our series. We are very honored today to have Tony with us. Um, if I could ask everybody to mute themselves while Tony is giving his presentation. Like always, if you have something that is relevant to what he's saying at the time, or that, that is an adjunct to what he is saying at the time, by all means, feel free we, we prefer an interactive if not save the questions for later tony said he'll stick around for a little while afterwards uh, i don't expect him to stick around for 11 hours like some of our sessions have run but uh, he will definitely be here for a, a little while afterwards so take advantage of this i'd like to introduce our guest today uh tony oxendine is probably one well i'm not going to say probably he is one of the most popular and sought after callers in the world um, I think he started dancing in 19, what was it, uh, in the year 72 or was it 1972? I'm, I'm not, not quite sure if it was 72 or 1972, but he's been doing it a while. And uh, I think within a couple of years, he was calling for five clubs locally regularly, went to a caller school in 74. And at that time, he had his own band and made a choice that with university and calling full time and everything else, he had a choice to make. So he... Uh, said, I'm in the entertainment business and he chose calling as entertainment and that is our blessing and our, our luck. Um, he does about 300 of these things a year or at least he's on the road for about 300 days a year. If you have ever been to a dance and if you've never met Tony or danced to Tony or had the privilege of hearing him call, I can pretty much guarantee you have danced to one of his records or some of his music. Um, He's recorded on at least 25 different square dance labels that I know of. Uh, he was also, uh, along with his partner, the late Jerry Story, the um, owner of one of the most popular record labels uh, that was going when I started, which was Royal Records. Tony is an accredited Caller Lab coach, uh, a member of Caller Lab, ex Board of Governors chairman. Uh, I could go on for, well, I could fill up the entire hour talking about Tony's accomplishments, but. Uh, He's another one of those people that I would consider a true legend in this industry, and he's got so much to take pride in, but what I admire most about Tony is if you ever ask him what he takes, 
the most pride in his accomplishments, they'll say something like Ricky, Kayla, and TJ. And nothing to do with square dancing, but he is always there, always personable, and always welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Oxendine. Oh, thank you, Mel. I don't deserve that. But now, now it's not just Ricky, Kayla, and TJ. I got five grandkids now, all, all girls. So anyway, uh, welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about singing call techniques, and I'm not going to sing, hopefully. <laughs> so we're going to start this thing off. Um, if you have questions, just stop me if I don't know how, you, how that works or whatever. But anyway, we'll go ahead and, and jump on this thing. I hope everybody can hear well. All right, let's see. In order, in order to be able to, to really do singing calls, you, you've got to, uh, you got to know a couple of things. Actually, more than a couple, but, but it's some things you, you should have a little working knowledge of. One is, is what our music is made up of, what composes what our music. And there's five elements of it. And the first one is going to pop up here, and it's timber. We're going to talk about that in a second. The second element is form. The third element, and I think the most important, is rhythm. The, fifth, the fourth element is melody, and the last element is harmony. Now, preface this, the first two that we had, timber and form, while important, uh, they're not really relevant to what we do. And there's a little definition of what timber is. And, and I'll give you a good example of timber. Uh, it would be the difference in a male voice singing and a female voice singing the same note. They sing in a different register. That's timber. Or the difference between the way a saxophone sounds and the way a trumpet sounds. That's timber. Uh, form is just the structure of the music. Uh, and it doesn't really come into effect with what we do. But these things do. Uh, the first one is rhythm. Rhythm is, is I think, the, the most important part of, of what we do. A lot of callers don't, don't understand rhythm. And, and really, it's, it's kind of simple. Rhythm is nothing more than the beat. It's where you pat your foot. Uh, most music that we use is recorded in either 2-4 time or 4-4 four, four time. Uh, you find every now and then you'll find us something recorded in 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, eight is like a, a jig rhythm. You guys may have already had a rhythm uh, class on this, which you, I don't want to cover the rhythms. But 6-8 um, is kind of like uh, if you've ever done that rhythm song, The Rhythm of My Heart. That is recorded in 6-8. In There's not, not a whole lot of 6-8. It's a good dancing rhythm. 2-4 is the most prominent. I think it's the best dancing rhythm. 4-4 four, four is, is kind of a, a rock and roll beat. Uh, the other is the melody. Now, the melody is the simple part. That's the part we actually sing. The Mary had a little lamb. And, and in other words, it's, it's nothing more than the lead. Uh, if you listen to a square dance song, if you ever want to find the lead, because a lot of, uh, for some reason, a lot of the labels now, when they record something, they record it without the lead and have, have that as an option. <laughs> And honestly, I don't know of a half dozen callers in the world that have a strong enough, that are strong enough vocally to sing without a lead instrument behind them. And that's why we put that lead instrument in there. Uh, we call it single pick lead. You'll usually find one instrument that plays one note that tells you what to sing. And it's, it's great to have it kind of like to, to, to back you up some. Uh, the other part uh, is harmony. Now, if the, and these are the three parts that we use. We use melody, rhythm and harmony and people think of harmony they think of two people blending their voices together and yes that is harmony however harmony uh, for our purposes is is everything is, is the dancers what the dancers hear it's everything that's not the rhythm or the melody everything that's and the dancers dance to that uh way driver became famous back in the 70s for establishing the part that dancers to with with all of his fills and chases and his singing calls we're going to talk about that in a little bit but that's what the dancers, that's what the dancers hear. That's the music the dancers hear. The dancers feel the rhythm. They feel the beat. They know when to pat their foot. We sing on the melody, but the dancers hear the harmonics. They hear what we're not singing. And that's the part they dance to. And that's why now you find so many of the labels now that, that years ago, years ago, back when, when Kip was a little boy, uh, the music they cut to what we call rhythm tracks. And it was nothing more than there was very seldom there was a lead instrument. There was never any fill instruments. It was just a, a banjo, bass, snare drum, maybe a fiddle, and they all played at the same time. And, and the, But there were holes in it. Now you find that where there's a hole, we now put instruments there. We call those fills, we call them chases. And, and I'll talk about that because those are the harmonics. That's what the dancers hear. Now, and, that, and that's all good, but in order to do a proper singing call, we have to know exactly 
the structure of a singing call. And, and I may be being bored to some of you guys, but that's okay. We're going to talk about it anyway. All right. A singing call has seven. Now, some t- most times, they have seven sections, excluding the intro and the outro. And what I mean by intro and outro is the, an intro is usually eight to 16 beats. Sometimes it's more. 16 is a long intro. Uh, normally, they're eight. And that kind of is usually the last eight bars of the song. And it kind of tells you where it's going to start and what note to hit, because that always in- introduces the root note of the song. Uh, the outro is the same, and it kind of puts a, a closer to the song. Most times, not always, it's, it's a repeat of the last line. It, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm going to give you some demonstrations of that when we do music here in a little bit. Uh, the other Now, here's what we have. We have seven parts. We have an opener, two figures, a middle break, two more figures, and a closer. And that's the way most square dance tunes are structured. Each one is 64 beats. Uh, years ago, every now and then, you would see a song that had four 80s. It would have an 80-beat figure. Uh, I have not seen one of those in a long, long time. 99.94% of the singing calls you hear now are seven 64 beats seven times and they're all the structures the same always uh sometimes the structure of the song it'll have the same it'll play the same 64 bar 64 beats seven times it'll be the same thing seven times through which is kind of boring oftentimes the opener the middle break and the closure will be a different melody than what the figures are you know the figures may be playing the break and the openers may be playing the chorus for instance of, of a particular song and we'll talk about that too when i get to demonstrate but that's the basic structure of a singing call that's what we know is that's our basic structure and i can say there's 64 beats of music here's what's important to remember if you do a figure that is 64 beats the figure head square through four here's an old common figure everybody uses uh, head square through four, do si do, swing through, boy run, bend the line, right and left through, flutter wheel, slide through, swing and promenade. That's been done seven zillion times. That is a 64 beat figure. But if you start the song, when you get ready to do the figure, if you start the song on the first beat and you say, well, now the head square through and you use that first beat, they, the dancers cannot dance that 64 beat figure because they no longer have 64 beats of music to dance in. You've taken away this first part of that first first part of their beats so if you're going to use a full 64 beat figure you're going to have to pre-cue the figure you have to start before the figure starts to give them time so they step on beat one and then you complete the 64 beat figure we'll talk about that too perhaps all right so here's here's the nuts and bolts of things all right the first thing in doing a singing call is you got to figure out how to select a song yeah now with me i like 70s rock and roll in fact before i got on this thing here i was watching a documentary on tv about the group Kansas, which is a 70s band. And, and, and I just think they're a phenomenal band. And in fact, I was trying to find when they're in concert sometime, I'd like to go see them again. I've seen them a couple of times. So you, you, you find a song that, that you like, a genre that you like. So I do a lot of 70s rock and roll stuff. That's what I, that's what I like. I don't, I don't do exclusively that, but that's, that's my first thought. So, and I try to find a song that has a dance rhythm. There's, there's a lot of songs that are really great and they just don't have the dance rhythm. I've seen I've seen record labels that have made the mistake of trying to record a song and record it in the same the same dance rhythm, the same beat that it had on the radio. And sometimes these things don't work. A lot of these four four songs just don't work for us to dance. It, they feel we could, we call it three legged. Um, there's a way to fix it, and we'll talk about that too. But it must have a, you've got to find a song that's got a good rhythm track to dance to. Now, and it's also helpful if you can find a song that you either know the melody already so that you're not learning it, or it has a melody line that you can easily learn. Now, so that's why I say when I listen to 70s music, it's easy for me to find a 70s song to record because I already know the song. So I don't have to spend a whole lot of time learning the song. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more helpful that way. Now, and here's what's important. A lot of callers, the first thing you want to do is they come up to me all the time. They want to know what a particular song, what key it's recorded in. And I tell them, the key is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. You don't sing in a particular key. Nobody sings in a particular key. Some songs we record are in the key of C. Some are in G. Some are in F. Some are in C major, C minor. The, the trick to that, you want to find the range of the song. In other words, the lowest note in the song to the highest note in the song. Can you hit the lowest note and the highest note comfortably? And the only way to do that is listen to it. You got to listen to the whole thing. And then you find the notes. If you have trouble with the note, then you may have to go to a harmonic if you can't hit the lowest note or the highest note. Um, if you guys know Dee Dee Darty, Dee Dee Darty has made a living because 
in the beginning, before some of the labels started recording tunes for women, uh, they were recorded for a male voice. They were they were cut in male keys, and so it was very hard for female callers to call normal singing calls. They either had to sing in in their their head voice, way up high, like an opera singer, or way down low. And it was very difficult for the girls to do that. Dee Dee was able to sing in the cracks. She sings the harmonics for, for a lot of the songs, uh, and she pulls it off great. Uh, some some of the some of the lady callers, female callers, have the have the vocal range and the, and the things they can perhaps do it, but most don't because they're not in the right key. Now, fortunately, labels like Chic and some of the others are recording songs with the female version. They'll cut it in two keys, one for male, one for female. So that's really helped the female callers. And onward and upwards. Now, I like to sing in the car. So if I find it, when I get a song I like, first thing I do is it, I used to put it on CD. Now my car, I have, a, I have a relatively new car. It's only a year old. And the CD player is in the glove box. It's not even where it should be. But I do have an MP. I have a plug for a USB. So I can either listen to my phone or US. I can get a, get a flash drive and put music on. But I sing and practice in my car when I'm driving down the road. I can sing as loud as I want, as flat as I want. It doesn't bother anybody other than I get strange looks when I stop at the stoplight. People look at me funny. But I can sing. And, and, and I, like, I like the sound in the car. It's kind of like singing in the shower. Uh, now... What you want to do too is when you play a song, especially when you're trying to learn a song, you want to be sure that you listen to the entire tune. You want to listen to the whole thing because a lot of times songs will have a key change and you want to be where when that key change is coming. I'm going to play one in a little bit um, that's going to have a key change in a place that you never figure. Most key changes occur at the beginning of the, of the section, uh, like at the beginning of number four, the beginning of number seven. Uh, I'm going to show you one in a little bit that, that has the key changes in the middle of number seven. It's, it's 32 beats into the song. It's kind of weird, but I think it's, well, you'll see. Um, but you want to be careful of that. Tell you a true story. Years ago, I did a caller school. Jerry Justin did a, a session on smooth dancing. And he was, he was one of the first callers I heard that was using what we now call the, the contemporary music. He was doing, he did a song called, he was, he's calling Patter to a song called You're Beautiful by James Blunt. Blount, Blunt. Anyway, and it was just beautiful. And I had to have it. So I went immediately after his session. I went on Amazon, downloaded it, paid 99 cent, got it. And me being the cocky little thing that I am, I thought, well, hell, I'll just use this tonight. This is at the national convention, mind you. And so I'm in, I'm in the advanced hall and I'm calling and I'm using that song. And man, it, it is really smooth. Everybody's just moving and their heads are flowing and everybody's going. And I come to a point that I, I decide I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a motivate. And so I raise the volume on the music so that you know, the dancers have danced to the music. And right at the time I raised the volume of the music, bear in mind, I have not listened to this song all the way through. James Blount, Blount or whatever his name is, is singing. And he decides to use a very, very vulgar word right about the point that I raised the volume up. Now, I heard it. Fortunately, the dancers didn't hear it. You know, so I was able, I got snuck through that. First thing I did when I got back to my room that night was, was I got, uh, I clipped it out and clipped, this tune, clipped that bad word out so that I could use it. But so be careful with that. It'll come back and bite you in the butt if you're not, not careful. Now, and also, I try to let, especially when I'm doing a, if I'm going to go in the studio and do a tune, I, I try to let the music tell me what to do. In other words, does the music say grand square at the beginning? Does it say circle left? Does it say four ladies chain? Does the figure say head square through or heads promenade halfway or heads do something, heads reverse promenade halfway? So does it say that? Listen to the music. Let the music speak to you. And find a figure that fits that, that the structure of the song. Uh, you'll get some use out of it. Now, I don't recommend listening to the vocal side of a tune, even though I, I put vocals on. And I never vary, I never vary unless I try never to listen to the vocal side of the tune because I tend to emulate the person on the flip side. And, and I don't want to sound like anybody else. So I take the song, put it in my car, and I play it over and over and over and over again. If I cannot find the lead note, if I can't find what's saying, listen for the bass guitar. The bass guitar will always play the lead. If you're ever looking to hear a song, that if the song does not have a lead instrument, listen to the bass. The bass will play the lead of the song. But I go over and over and over again. So I, I, I figure it out. And then I let the music tell me what to do. Uh, sometimes if it's caller I know or I like, I might listen to the call side, but typically I do not. Uh, because you want to develop your own style. I've heard too many guys try to be somebody else. 
And, and if you try to be somebody else, you're always going to be second best because nobody is better at being themselves than that person. And, you know, uh, probably if I had to guess, the most copied caller I know was Jerry Story. And uh, there, there was more, call, I've heard more callers celebrate G and Hall and, and the whole thing. And it's not, there, there will never be another Jerry Story, number one. But even if you were still here, you're only going to be second best. Find what fits you and develop your own style so that you then, then you can sound like yourself. You won't sound like anybody else. So now how do we practice? All right. I like to find the original song when I can and listen to the original song. Uh, it lets me get a feel. Sometimes the song will tell a story and it may, and I may want to project that story when I do the singing call. The original song may very well tell some type of story. So I listen to the song originally, and here again, it's in my car over and over and over again. So I can sing with the song. I learn the song by singing with the real song if I don't know it already. And then I try, I see how close the melody of the square dance song fits to the melody of the original song. Sometimes we have to piece parts together to make a song work. Uh, and so you'll find that, that a square dance song will have Maybe the, the beginning of it will be a chorus. Instead of starting with the verse, it'll start with the chorus and then finish with the chorus. Or it may start, instead of starting with the verse, it may start with the bridge. And then instead of going, it may go bridge chorus or bridge verse. It could be anyway. So you want to listen to the square dance version to see how close it compares to the version that you've been practicing. Now, and here's the part that, I don't know. I don't recommend sight calling singing call figures. Uh, I'm a big believer in finding a, a figure that fits a particular piece of music and using that figure to the, to the music. For instance, I think that anybody that the song Summer Sounds is, is a song that's it's, it's 50 years old and it's, it's the second biggest selling square dance record that has ever existed. The number one selling record, if anybody doesn't know, is The Auctioneer by Marshall Flippo. The second biggest selling record of all time is Summer Sounds. And anybody that changes the figure for summer sounds should be taken out in the backyard and shot. Because the figure is, it fits that song musically. It fits the structure of the song perfectly. And it is such a pleasure to dance to because it's set that back then people wrote figures to fit the song. Um, now we don't. And so we get half promenades and, and we're sitting at home waiting while the caller's singing. And, and so I recommend uh, find it. Find figures that work, uh, that, that, that you come up with, that you're not thinking of on the fly. Uh, most times, there are a few callers that can cite call singing calls. There are a few that can. I only know a handful that can do it consistently, smoothly, all the time. Uh, there, there's only four or five that I know of. And, and if you're not one of those guys, I would, I would kind of stick to using things you know. All right. And what you want to do is you want to practice. There's there's There's... I can't emphasize the part that you've got. To practice. The point is you practice to the point that you don't need to read the cue sheet. How many of you guys have ever worked with somebody? And, and to me, round answer cures are, are the worst, except now they don't, they, since they got the computer, but before they, they cued and called like this and you never could see their face. Now we're buried into the screen and either way is wrong. You need to have that song memorized to the point that you can get away from your computer and away from that screen and call to the dancers so that the dance, you know, part of, part of being an entertainer with this thing is that the dancers need to see you and they need to see you see them. And, and that's all, that's all part of it. So that when you sing, the dancers feel like you're singing to them, that you're not just going through the motions. So practice to the point that you don't need that cue sheet. And a good way to do that is to practice the song without the music. Once you get it going, there's nothing wrong with sitting on the floor or sitting in your car and doing the hits promenade halfway around, down the middle, and, and do it until you feel good with, without the music. And I'll tell you what, that, that's a lot harder than you think to try to carry the melody without, without, the, without the music to back you up. And most importantly, you know, I'm like, I'm like all of you guys. We all think we're pretty good singers, you know. And but but I can tell you that that none of us are as good as those musicians that are on the flip of that music. So oftentimes we need to learn when to sing and when not to sing and let the music come through so that the dancers can dance to the music instead of dancing to our voice. And it's, it's a better dance experience for them. And it is so much easier to sell a singing call. One of the best callers in the world that ever walked, ever walked the face of the earth was Lee Cotman. 
passed away several years ago. Lee could not sing a lick. He couldn't carry a tune in two buckets, but he knew how to talk a singing call. He could do a singing call and talk you through it, and you felt like you were dancing the singing call. And he, he mastered that. Uh, so if you, if, you not, if you don't feel strong vocally, find music that is strong vocally. I like music. This I like a lot of music. We just talked earlier about developing your style. Now, you know, and everybody has their own opinion. I have, you know, they're like elbows. Everybody's got at least two. <laughs> All right. I took, told you earlier, uh, try to practice the song without listening to the call side. Because here, nowadays, you know, there's some callers who were talking the other night and, and somebody said something about uh, who, who records on what label. It was important. I said, and, the, and we came up and said, who is not recording now? Everybody I know <laughs> is recording on some label. There's no criteria now. When I came up, when I first started calling, if you were on a, if you were on a square dance label, you not only could you sing, but you could call. So if you went to a chaparral and you listened to a chaparral tune, every one of those guys on that label on that label could sing and they could call. You go you go to rhythm, everybody on that label could sing and they could call. You knew what you were getting, and and there were there were labels. You go to Red Boot was another one of the big big labels back in the day. All of these guys could sing and they were. Nowadays, I'm convinced that some of these producers could, could they don't, oh, they, well, they give a care, they don't care. They just really don't care what it sounds like on the flip. So don't, that's why I don't listen to the flip side, because oftentimes these guys just flat ass can't sing. And so be sure if you listen to the call side, listen to a guy that can sing. Pra and here's, we're going to talk about this in a little bit too, when I say pre-cueing. Remember I said something earlier about a 64 beat figure. If you take the first beat of the phrase, the dancers don't have a 64 beats to dance in. Pre-cueing helps that. And what I mean by pre-cueing, uh, everybody does. When you use grand square, you always start grand square before the end. If you were doing a singing call and you were doing the, the tagline of the, of the last figure and, and your promenade and yada, yada, you always say side space grand square before number seven or number four actually starts. So they, the dancers actually get to dance on, on beat one. Um, that's what you need to practice for every song if you're going to do a full 64 beat figure. Otherwise, take something out. If you're going to do, if you're going to take the first beat away from them, then you need to take something out of your. You need to take a dosi do or something out of, of the figure that you use. Um, work out different ways to say the same thing. And what I mean by that, and this works with your patter as well, but especially in the singing call, find the phrasing that fits the singing call. You it, it may not feel good to say head square through four. In the singing call, it may feel better to say head square through and let the music work. Or sometimes it, you may want to rat or chatter and say head square through four hands around you go. Sometimes that fits. The same is true with promenade or alaman left. Sometimes alaman left feels good. Sometimes left alaman feels good, especially in patter. But in singing call as well, if you do, sometimes they fit the music, the phrasing better. So work, work, work on that kind of stuff. Um, another good thing to do is, is when you know the original song, you can get different lyrics from the song. A lot of times we, you know, when we record a tune, we're limited. We can't put all the figures, all the lyrics of the song on there. There may be some great lyrics that we didn't forget about. I just had that happen. And I'll talk about this song in a minute. I just recorded one called Don't It Make You Want to Go Home. And it's got such great lyrics, but I couldn't use all of them. You know, you only got three, you only got three sections you can put words in, you know, one, four and seven. Um, so listen to the song, find you some good lyrics. You'd be surprised. Um, now here, this is kind of into programming. And I'm sure you guys, well, I'm sure Mills already had a programming thing for you. Have you? Have you done a programming thing? I thought so. Um, and where callers talk about, you know, the, the emotional level of the dance. And that's what programming is. It's where, you, where the highs and the lows are. When you, when you make the dancers get excited, when you bring them down. And people, I'm, you know, some may disagree. Patter is good. But I can tell you that singing calls control the emotions of the dance. They, they control the, the emotions of, of the, for the dancer. Uh, the patter, as long as, you, you know, there's, listen, I made a living out of it for years, you know, because, you know, nobody's ever called me a great patter caller. <laughs> you know, and I've made a living at it. There's guys that do, you know, so much better patter than I do. You know, so I have to rely on finding good singing calls to pull me through. So that's, that's why I sell, I sell myself. I sell myself vocally. And here's the and here's the way I rate singing calls. And and if you use a one to four scale, so if you're doing if if you're if you're programming of the dance, if if the levels go from one to four, and, and you you're doing your peaks and valleys, four being the the highest, um, you want to find you want to find songs that make the dancers 
makes the dancers want to get up and dance. They jump on the floor. So now here comes the uh, just an absolute absolute plug. You guys are going to get the benefit of, of hearing. Uh, we have not put out the 2021 Platinum yet. In case you haven't guys hadn't realized it, we only put them out in January with all the thing with Jerry. I decided to hold on. And uh, so I'm going to play. I'm going to play some stuff. You'll get a preview of the 2021 Platinum stuff coming out on the Royal and how I would put them in my in my program. Okay, so this one, this I consider this a number one. This one's called Help is on the Way. And uh, it's a little river band song. Let me play a little bit of it. And you'll see that it's got a really, really strong downbeat. Ted Lazat actually recorded this one for me. Now this one kind of, it's, it, to me it says four ladies chain or four ladies promenade at the beginning. It does to me, this does not say circle left to grand square because I can't generate enthusiasm on circle left. I can generate enthusiasm with four girls or four boys promenade. That generates enthusiasm. This is called, it's a little river band song. Now this is the one I was telling you about earlier. It's got a key change at the end, which I want, to, want you to listen for. But we put the key change in the middle of number seven. Now, normally singing calls, the key change is at the beginning of a, of a section. This one, we put the, I'm gonna play the whole section for you. And um, this is number, this is, this is section seven. This is the closer of the song. And I'll, I'll do a little bit of it so you can get a feel for it. I missed the part, let me try again. Coming at the end. Four ladies chain, turn the girl around and now you chain them home. Straight across now. Join hands, circle to the left, get ready, the key change is coming. Out of man, that corner, weave the ring. Here it comes, right here. Hear the key change? And not only the key change, the rhythm changed. Can you tell that it changed? Listen to the drum lick. This is what gets the people excited. Listen to the drum lick coming in right here. That driving drum beat, that's a 4-4 four, four rhythm song. That driving drum beat is what gets the dancers excited. That and key change gets them excited. Um, Another song that I use, this is another, this is also another new one coming out on Royal and the Platinum, if you guys want to get it. <laughs> oh dear, that's just shameless. I know I'm shameless. Let's see. Well, hell, where did it go? Here we go. Remember the old Chaparral song, Tulsa Time? We redid Tulsa Time. Again, now this is another one. Can you tell that it's got that driving 4-4 four, four rhythm? And the instruments are hot. They're playing at a higher register. That's a dobro playing now in a very high register. Gets people excited. Go like this. I'm a living on Tulsa time. Living on Tulsa time. Yeah, that to me is a, is a one. That, I would use that in like my third tip of the evening if I wanted to get the dancers really excited. Okay. Uh, let's go and keep on going here because I'm getting short of time. Now, number twos are up-tempo songs, just not quite as, as, as exciting as what I think the number one number ones are. So here's one. This is a Bobby Goldsboro tune. Here again, you, you might want to get the song so you can hear, know all the lyrics. It's called Little Things. Again, now this has got a 4-4 four, four rhythm. Little things that you do. Now, what I want you to listen for is listen what the, the instrument after I say little things because the dancers don't dance to me they're going to hear this. Listen, hear the guitar come in here. Listen. Circle little things that you do make me glad I'm in love with you. That's what I mean by the dancers dancing the harmonics. They hear that guitar that's coming in. Uh, here's one. I've wanted to do this song forever. This is a uh, Boss Skaggs tune. See if y'all remember this one. Called Lido Shuffle. Now, to me, this says Grand Square. But that was all he missed, cause he ain't coming back. Now, unless you know Lido Shuffle, there's nowhere in the in the opener here that the words Lido Shuffle is used. Because this is a verse. This is this arrangement of this is verse verse. So to make it exciting, we took the middle break, which is number four, 
and changed it from verse verse to chorus. And the chorus is lead oh, 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 oh. Comes over by here comes the bird. The chorus. Stand square. Lead oh. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. So gives you two things. It lets you sing the part, and it also changed, you know, it's the whole tune changed. Because now I'm able to say the title of the song. Otherwise, the title of the song is nowhere in there. And let's keep on going. Uh, those are what I would use as my big uplifters. Now, the kind of tunes that you want to use for the almost the whole dance, if you want to just kind of like have it smooth and have them going, find something that the dancers that can dancers can um, just pat their foot to. Like this, for instance. See if you remember this one. Play for me, Ben. Band. Oh, band. This is when you're in love with a beautiful woman. Circle to the left when you're in love with a beautiful woman. It's hard. Now, can you feel, can you, can you tell that would be kind of, how would you, that, that would be the way you want your entire dance to feel. You know, that nice little, that nice little rhythm. Now, this one, I want to show you this one. Uh, this one's really special. Uh, after Jerry passed away back in December and after things kind of, kind of settled down, Christy called me and, and asked me if I would do a, like a tribute song for, for Jerry. And, uh, and I got to thinking you know, what kind of song could I do? And the thing, I want to make this sound right, but over the years, Jerry and I came up with a lot of original things and, and most, and a lot of it, other callers did. And so it, it was no longer unique to us. This is the only song that I can remember that we did. We closed up dances with it and it was, it was uniquely us. Nobody, I don't, I don't know of anybody else that's doing it. And it's, it, it was out on K-Lox and it's called, Don't It Make You Want to Go Home. Again, it's got this. Oh, there's a drag strip down by the riverside where I went skinny dipping as a child. Feel that rhythm? Now, that's the way I would want my entire dance to feel, just like that. I'd want the dance, the dance to have that kind of uplifting feel. Um, now, the last one is if you know you're bringing the dancers up and, and you're going to bring them down in, a, in a, like a trough. This is where your ballads and love songs come in. Um, the pretty ones. For the guys that think they can sing, this is when you do a song that, you know, you just kind of like you want to sing to the girls or sing to the boys, depending on who you are. Um, show you what I mean by one. Uh, this is an old uh, Peaches and, and Herb tune from years ago. See, from the 70s. Reunited. Good. We're reunited like a new day would. Left time on the corner and you do see do around your own. Now that's one that's one that you can just sing. Uh, here's here's another one. This Jack Jack Platt has recorded this, and this was a um, James Taylor. I think it's just Greg. This is a James Taylor song called Going Around One More Time. Now this is you turn and chain your lady home and now join a pan circle around the ring and now that's just a pretty one to sing it's just a pretty one to sing those ones that's kind of what you level the floor out with if you put them in like a little trough at the end um all right now there was a couple of questions came in i'm not sure and i lost them they popped up on my screen and now they're gone and i don't know how to get them back mel how do i get the questions back and I'll stop and try to answer that one. I've only got one more page to go. Yeah. Um, if they came to you as a personal message, it wouldn't have shown up on my screen. Oh, well, I know it may have then. But uh, if you go to the I, chat and then did, just scroll up, it will come through to you. On my screen, remember, it, we'll cover it at the end because I've only got one more. One more. Yeah, one more I've, got, I've got a couple of comments and questions that came up here as well, but I'll save those to the okay. end because you covered what most of What I want to do now is, is I want to show you uh, my thought process with, with, doing, a, with doing a song. Uh, this is a song. And how I came how I came up with the figure and, when I, and what to do with it. Um, 
this is a song uh, by uh, John Lennon's Imagine. It was done years ago on Aussie Tempo uh, in a beautiful cut. I wanted to change it a little bit, and I was very fortunate this time that we were able to get, if you don't see this name up here at the top, Janae Fleener, if you keep up with country music, she was the uh, country music musician of the year for the last two years, and it's the first time that a female has ever won that award, so we were really, really fortunate to get her in for a square dance session, so I used her a lot, and so on this one, I'm, I'm kind of featuring the, the, uh, the, the fiddle on this one. Uh, I really feature it at the end. I'll play the tag for you because I think the tag is the best part of the song. Um, I pre-cue all the figures because I think the music is just really, really good on this one. I think it's exceptional. I'm a little biased, uh, but, but I really do. Um, the rhythm on this one is 4-4. Four, four. And I, I remember I told you earlier that a lot of times 4-4 four, four is, is, is a little awkward. However, there, there's a we, we use what's called cut time, which means that the bass guitar is going to play the, the, the beat that you step on. The band, the drummer will be playing in 4-4, which is a little awkward to dance to. However, the bass player is going to tell you where to put your foot. So if you listen to the bass instrument here, he'll tell you where to put your foot each time. This is John Lennon's Imagine. Side space, grand square. Imagine there's no heaven. Notice I have the fiddle playing the lead. Easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us only sky. Now I want to come through the figure here. I'm going to come into the figure. I want to hear how, what I mean when I say pre-cue the figure. It's coming to the end of number one. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Head square through. And I feature this. You hear that harmonica? You do sign do. Swing through and then boy run right. Half tag, scoot back. Boy, run right, slide through, and you swing. Take her by the hand and promenade her home. I try to use as few words as possible in the figure so they can hear the music. Here's the second figure, new instrument. Head square through to four. That harmonica that was playing the, the, the fill a while ago is now playing the lead. And the fiddle is taking the, the lead, the fill, the fill. Because I'm coming into number four, which features the fiddle playing the lead instrument. Now, so I do the whole thing, and I, I put a grand square in because grand square always, uh, have you ever noticed the people when you do the grand square and you do grand square, size base grand square, 32 beats, alaman left, weave the ring, swing and promenade. It only gives you a half promenade, but that's okay with this one because this allows me to chain the ladies across and back at the end to let the fiddle play. So here's the way the song ends. The fiddle. All the people swing and you promenade your home. Coming in number seven, you. You may say that I'm the dreamer, but I'm not chain the ladies over and back. And here comes this fiddle. I just think that's just a beautiful instrument and that allows the dance and that and i use a figure that i, I just pre-cue it and let them dance to the music rather than to me and that's all i have wow <laughs> was enough uh well that's about 15 different one hour sessions covered in less than an hour tony <laughs> we might have to have you back to break that down into 15 separate sessions <laughs> So I thought um, David was the one that sent me a question, but it went away on my computer, so I don't, I don't have it. So yeah, it would be in your chat. It didn't come up in mine. I've got a just a couple. One was more of a comment than a question, I think. But feel free to chip in. Okay. Um, for new callers, you're saying that we have to dance. Sorry, dancers dance to the harmonics. Callers sing to the beat or ahead of the beat, and callers sing to the melody line. How do you keep them separate? No, no, we, we call, we, we sing on the, on the lead line. Yeah. After the lead line comes the harmonics, and the dancers dance to that. And let me show you what I mean. Um, let's use this same song, the same song. Uh, let me go to a figure part of it. See what I mean? Okay, here's the fiddle. And, and now, let me tell you this. Uh, most, um, most of the square dance labels that use real musicians, in other words, you go to the studio and, and, and you have 
real pickers that you're paying by the session, you'll find that most of them arrange their music this way. Whatever plays the lead in one section, uh, whatever plays the fill in one section plays the lead in the next so that there's a, a smooth transition from one instrument to the other. You don't have to pay to do a lot of overdubbing. If you're not using real musicians, it doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, we go to Nashville and these guys, uh, $378 a, uh, for a session. You know? So you want to get as much out of them as you can. So you'll find that this one here, when the, the fiddle is, is playing the lead here, you'll find, and that's in number one, you'll find that this fiddle plays the fill in number two and number three. So let me show you number three. And I know it's number three because the fiddle will be playing the lead. Hear the fiddle playing the field? So what I mean by that is this. Oh shucks, I found the beginning of it again. Here, I'm coming in to number three. Here's what I mean by the, they dance on the harmonics. But I'm not the only one. Head square through. That's what they, they hear this harmonica. Do, sign, do. One time around. So you want, you want to sing, you will sing on the lead instrument. But then after we finish singing, you will hear us another song, another instrument come in and fill that hole. Because we don't say head square through, four hands around. You're going to go around all the way around to the corner. And when you get to the corner, you do do si do We don't take every beat of the music. It's impossible or Probably. Does that, does that make sense, Mel? Yeah, it makes sense to me. And it's a perfect lead into the next question that came yeah. up was, what's the best way to stop filling in movements such as right and left through, turn the girl, square through, get four, or Ferris wheel into the middle, et cetera? Oh, perfect segue. <laughs> it, it, it was Shakespeare that said, foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. <laughs> you want to be real careful. I try. I'm one of those. I'm of the school. Uh, and, and it's different from, from the guys, from my predecessors. I don't chant when I call. Uh, I, and I don't teach people to call the way I call because I teach people to chant because that's the way you stay on the beat. But I don't chant. So if I'm, if I'm going to do this tune here, uh, let me pick another one. Let me, let me get another song so you have a, a different feel of it. Uh, let's play one I haven't played yet. Uh, let's see. Here we go. All right, so this, if I was doing this one, this is called Keep the Customer Satisfied. Circle it, it's the same old story. It is. Everywhere I go, left on the man, do sign, do. Now, I could say, let me get to the figure. Come to the figure part, and I'll, I'll try to emphasize it. If I were going to chant a versus just do the music. And I'm trying to keep my customers satisfied, satisfied. Here's, I'm not here. The head square through four hands around you go now. You do see do one time around. Now I'm covering up, can you hear that I'm covering up a lot of the music? So the dancers are dancing to me rather than to the music. So I change it and come in the same thing. The head square through, let's go. Do side, do one time round. Now, so so I don't chant. I, I I let I let the I try to let the music do as much work for me as I possibly can, both on patter and on singing calls. I, I do I do it for both. I don't chant when I do patter, and I'm not saying not to, because for, for most callers, I think you probably should. I I spend a lot of time listening to music. I probably spend more time than most guys listening to music to find the little subtle nuances of what even, especially on my patter tunes, but and my singing calls too, but even on my patter tunes, I want to know what my music is doing every, at any single point so that I know that this song right here, let's go, let's go back to Imagine because we were talking about that. I know that if I hear that fiddle on Imagine, I know that I'm in section one, four, or seven, guaranteed, guaranteed I'm in section one, four, seven. And, and, I'm, and if I'm in section one, and this piano is playing the lead in section one on number one, then I know that same piano. If I go to section five, I know that same piano is going to be playing. Let me go to five. Where's five? Here we go. All right, coming at the end of four. This is the fiddle. This is the end of four. What's playing the fiddle? And then I know whatever's playing the fill for that is coming in for the lead. 
coming in this sense right now. Here's that fiddle, I mean the piano. So I, I know that. So I try to do that with all of my music so that I know exactly where I'm at at any given point in my tune. Clear as mud? Clear as mud. I'm going to bump a couple questions up here because uh, one, I think you just answered. Could you explain what you meant by chant? And I believe you were just talking about taking me, the killer words, but yeah. give us a better explanation. Yeah, I'll show you chant. In order to show you chant, I have to show you patter, but, but I'll show you what I mean by chanting. Uh, let me find a... And it's easy to, to chant to to songs that are more to me that are more country. Let me and I'll show you. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Let me find something that'll please. Hey Tony, can you uh, stop sharing a screen so we can see more of your big smiling face? I can't, I can't show the screen. I don't know if I can show the screen on this one. Let me see. Maybe You're already I'm... sharing the screen. Hey, stop sharing on your PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Hang on then. That way we can see more of your smiling face. All right then. Let me. Oh, hell, where do I stop sharing? Hang on, let's go to here. Stop share. Okay. Is that better? Oh yeah. All right. All right. I can see it. All right. Let me let me make let me make Bill happy. All right. This is a, if I were gonna call if if I were gonna show a guy how to call patter to this song. Now this is on riverboat. You can thank me, you can thank me later, Bob. Okay. Bow to the partner, corner of the hall, circle to the left, around the hall, and now, I'm in a lift with the old left hand, your partner, right and around a lift, and right in a lift, around the land. That's chatter. If I were doing that, bow to the partner, corner two, circle to the left, around you go. I'm in a lift, and then you walk right in and around a lift, and and then I don't say anything. I let the music do it, but that, that's me. I don't teach that. That's what I do. I teach guys to chant because we need, it helps callers stay on the root, stay on the beat. Uh, and sometimes in a singing call, it may help you to chant a little bit, to stay on, on the beat. And that brings us to the next question I moved up is, um, I think you just answered it. Can you talk a little bit about your lyrical phrasing choices? You tend to play a lot with time. Do you do this naturally or is there a plan behind it? I lost you. I don't know what you mean. I believe they're talking about how you use your vocals. You sort of offset. Sometimes you're, you're slightly off the Willie Nelson thing, or a lot of time you just give a vocal and leave a lot of empty space. You play with the time in your singing. Yes, I, I like that because I like for the dancers to dance to the harmonics. And unless I want to show off on a singing call, and, 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 I, and I do, I'm, I'm sure all of you guys do as well, sometimes I want to show off vocally. Let me give an example. Okay, here's, here's the same thing with here's the imagine again <laughs> here it is without any help I'm coming at the end it, coming at the end imagine all the people living life with beats you coming to the end of the song you ready to the ladies right here but i'm not the old chain the ladies over and back i don't say anything Now, but that's not the way I do it. I want to show off. So you may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not chain the ladies over and back. You may say that I'm a dreamer. That's the way I do it. So I cover up some of that free music, but I recommend that you don't cover it up. Sometimes I want to show off and, and, and cover it up. Um, okay, I've got two more, two more questions. Two more questions for you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Of perfect fills, I think. I think, and when I've done my music presentation before, I'll tell you this. I think the most perfect square dance record that has ever existed is the song, um, "Oh Hell," on rhythm, all wrapped up in you. I think is the is the perfect square dance song. If you don't have that, he just re-released it digitally. And uh, listen to the fills and the chases and the trills and that thing as they follow each instrument. It's, it's just, it's a work of art. And, and that'll show you, that kind of maybe explain a little better than I can explain it. Uh, one was a clarification. Uh, you said you rate your music in programming one to four. Uh, that's, 
initially thought as a good to good to not so good, but that's not what you're doing. It's can you just clarify your one to four scale, what each number means? Yeah, I'm talking about emotional levels of the dance. The dance is a roller coaster. OK, there's very few callers that can put the dancers on the ceiling, you know, and, and, and keep them there the whole night. So that's why I never start with my best material, because if you start with your best thing you have, the only place you can go is down. And, but so if I'm going to bring them down, I want to bring them down for, for a purpose. And so when I program my dance and I have a program, I build up, let's say in, in a two hour dance, in a two hour dance, I'm going to do seven tips, maybe eight, but, but about seven, depending on whether I have rounds or not. So th tip number three is going to be the highlight, is going to be one of the highlights of my, song, of my evening. That's going to be a four. It'll be the top. I won't do another four until the very last tip. The very last song will always be a four, a one. I'm sorry, I'm going backward. It will be a one because I want the dancers to leave the dance wishing that they'd have stayed, wishing I would do another one. I always want to leave them. Yes, the whole, the whole trick. You want to always leave them wanting more. So, so I build up emotionally. I want to build the dancers' enthusiasm and emotion. How do people get excited? What happens when you get excited? You get louder. Vocally, you get louder. And, and they get faster sometimes. So I do that with the music. The music, as I'm building it up, I, I do a tune that I can bring the, the music up a little bit. But you'll find that the pitch of my voice will get higher because that's what happens when you get excited. The pitch of your voice gets higher and you get a little louder. That's the same with people. It's their, that's their emotion. So I can't get them to speak to me. So I get them to dance a little louder. I get them to dance a little, a little higher. So that's what I mean when I try to do a four. I, I build up to that. So I would never start, for instance, I would never start a dance uh, with one of my great tunes, or if you have a, have a great tune, I always start with always start a dance at what I would think would be a two, which is what I told you earlier would be a two or three, which which is what the, the most of my dance is going to be. It's going to be a lively little thing. I'm not going to start off with with uh, four walls. You know, I'm just, my first tip is not going to be sides, face, grand, square, four walls to hear me, four walls. I'm going to do something that makes them feel good. I want them to do that first tip to, for them to say, "Man, I'm glad I came." And then when they leave the dance, my goal as a caller, I want them to leave the dance feeling better at 10 o'clock or 9.30. I want them to leave feeling better than when they came in. So I try to take them on an emotional roller coaster. Now, you can do that choreographically, and you can do it musically. I try to do it both ways. You'll find that, that my material gets its hardest by tip three. And then from tip three down, I start letting the dancers relax some. I bring them up a little bit. So, so if you looked at my dance, it would start at a two, go to a four, come back down to about a two. Then I would peak at about a three right here before the end. And then I would bring it back up to the end. So the end would be the, my top um, choreographically and, and music wise. So I'm, the hardest I'm going to get is third tip from that point on. The dancers are going to dance. That's I'm going to have taught or worked everything that I'm going to work for the dance by third tip. Then they're going to dance that smoothly the rest of the evening. And and the singing calls the same way. I'm going to, I'm going to do, you know, uh, I don't know whatever whatever I want to do. So one of the, one of these songs. How would you like a whole evening of 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 dancing? I wish I don't, see. I don't have any bad music. <laughs> but 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 here's what about this. Can you imagine that dancing this rhythm the whole night? This, 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 to me, this song feels good. This makes you pat your foot. It makes people smile. Regarding you know, whether you know the song or not, just the music and the rhythm. It just, it's one of those things. You can't be, that's the way I want them to feel for the majority of my dance. Sometimes I'll make them feel a little better than that. I'm going to bring them up a little. Sometimes I'm going to drop them down a little bit underneath that because I, I don't want them to get, I don't want to do this all night. I want, I want them to feel, you know, have you ever been to a movie? Have you ever noticed that, that movies and books, they peak? You get, you, there's an exciting part and it, kind of, and it kind of goes like this. And usually a good movie will end on a high note. Yes? Unless you're a Stephen King fan. <laughs> I am a Stephen King fan. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that's a line from one of your color schools, actually. <laughs> Which one? Um, oh, uh, what was it? That was NECA in oh, 90, 91? Oh, God, I was, I, was, I was so young then. <laughs> um, okay, you clarified. Uh, okay, and that was on programming. Yes, we have done a couple on programming. We've also got Betsy Gotta coming up to do programming uh, with us, another session on programming on... The 14th of March, it's one of those topics that we say can never be under taught and under explained. 
that's all the questions I had, except for one that Mark came in the chat. Correct, Mark. Sorry, what was that? Mark put a post up to me and he said, my, my level two music is everybody else's four. It, it, it should flip it up, four being the top. And, uh, but no, I, well, a, a couple a couple people noted that, that you were flipping one and four around, but you corrected that later on, so. I, I'll be honest, I did it backwards on my presentation. I don't think of it that way. I think of one being the bottom and four being the top. I didn't do it that way when I did the presentation. So I, yeah, so yeah. to me, four is the top. Yeah, and uh, Michael, you had a, I'm not quite sure what the question was, but it was dealing with the melody line and the fiddle and changing the lead from where it was. Um, I'll let you clarify that. I think Tony answered that in the music structure, but if I, if I don't understand it right, by all means, chime in. Tony did explain it. Tony, you want to do that again? And in other words, uh, what I wanted to point out was if the fiddle is playing a melody that you're singing to in the first heads figure, most likely the fiddle is going to be playing the melody in the second, in the first sides figure as well. And if the piano is playing the fill, the lead instrument when they're, when, when you're not calling, and that's in the first heads, it's probably also in the first sides. That was my comment. So I wonder if you, when you would go ahead and expound on that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's simply a matter of, of trying to save money in the studio. Uh, there, there's seven sections, and, and uh, in, each, in each section, there's a lead instrument and a fill instrument. So whoever plays the lead in number one always plays, to me, always plays the lead in four and seven. And the reason for that is they play the fill in number three. So on this imagine that we're doing, uh, in here, you'll notice that the number one, the lead instrument is played with. Coming in, this is the intro. Here's the, here's the song, fiddle lead. Now, so I need a way for that fiddle to, to smoothly come into the lead on number four. So in order to do that, then the fiddle has to play the fills. Hang on. Hear the, hear the, in this one, in this one, the, the harmonica is playing the lead and the fiddle is playing the fill behind it so that the fiddle can smoothly come into number four and take the lead. Listen. Phrase. Fiddle. Coming in. And right now, the fiddle takes the lead. Right now. And that's that's strictly an economic thing. If you're not using a lot, and a lot of the labels don't use real musicians, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They're not. They don't have to do that. We do that because it saves money. It saves time, which saves money. Simply put, if you're looking at a piece of music, don't just listen that you like it. Listen to the structure, listen to the technical thing and see how it best fits you and how it's going to affect the dancers. Is that Absolutely. It? And, then, and, and find a song, you, you know, several things. You want to fix that, that range. You don't want to get out of your range. You know, for instance, songs that, that Mike can sell. I can't sell because they're out of my range. His big tunes, he sells because he's got this bottom register that I don't have. So he finds tunes, Mike finds tunes that allows him to use that bottom register he has. Ghost Riders in the Sky, stuff like that. I don't do Ghost Riders in the Sky. I can't do the notes. So I have to find tunes that fit within my vocal range. Um, that's all the questions I had. Uh, David has asked if you could give us a few more examples of number fours from older music. Older music, okay, sure. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I, I, I'll tell you a, a good example that everybody does that I don't do is Pink Cadillac. That's a four. I don't know Pink Cadillac. Anybody want to ask me why? Go on. It's kind of asking me like why I don't yodel. Because it has lousy music. No, no, no. I don't have to. Um, let me show you. Let me show you. A, let me show you a a four. I got to find an old one. Hang on. See, I don't have many old ones. Hardly. I, I, my music, I'm real fortunate. I, I, mean, I, I have a lot of new music. <laughs> and I've had a lot of new music that I haven't used. I have not called since February. All right, here's a, here's a four. The 
mountain is high, high, the valley is low. You are confused on which way to go. Now, I try to sell that one vocally to make it a four. You don't have to. The music sometimes sells. Let me find. Let me show you another good one. Oh, um, here's a here's a good four. See, y'all, this is an old. Now, on the t on the listening to this does not sound like it would be a four. Whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. Now, that does not sound like a four on the face of it. But if you have two callers and you're willing to put forth the effort, this is a great one because one caller can sing, he's got the whole world. And the other caller at the same time, while one caller is singing the whole, he's got the whole world in his hands, the other caller can be singing this. I'm gonna rock my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Now, if you guys can, if you guys can hear that, sing, he's got the whole world and you'll see. And I'll do the other part. So you guys sing, he's got the whole world, and I'll sing the other part, and it blends, and it's so cool. Side space, grand square, he's got nobody singing. All right, the only work should be saying. My point, that, we won't do that. My point is, is that two callers can really sell that. We brought, uh, Paul Cody and I brought the house down at the National Convention. Uh, last year with that song and it, it doesn't sound like much to start with but let me find one that everybody does that i think is a is a is a number four and i'll try not to pick a royal tune all right ah, i know one i know one mountain music pop music mountain, mountain music, music. Mountain, mountain music uh yeah that would be a four mountain music would be a four as far as old tunes tennessee river tunes like that would be fours um they're not fours for me because i don't do i don't do uh mountain music without other callers. Um, this to me is a number four. And I'll show you why. You know, this one is on Lumac. Day after day, I'm more confused. The reason this is a four is because of the middle break and the closer. Because I... And I, you have to sell this sometimes to make a, to make a record of four. Sometimes you got to sell it. So I tell these people, here's my routine with this song. I tell the guys, listen, here's a song. Everybody knows the chorus, but nobody knows the verse. Nobody knows the words. I'm going to show you how that's true. Here's, here's the song. And you're not going to know, you're not going to know this song until I get to the chorus. Then everybody's going to know it. Everybody can sing it. It goes like this. Circle that. Day after day, I'm more confused. You know the song yet? Left Alabama, the corner, do sign, do. Left Alabama, the corner, weed the ring. Here's the part that we all know. We go, give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I want to get so now, recognize the song, but I, but to make it a four, that's not a four in itself. You have to make it a four for me. That's not, I say, you find where I'm at. It's hard for me to tell where I'm at. <laughs> See, let me let me go to the end. And drift away. Coming into number seven. Take me away. Side space, key change. Give me the beat, boy. Free my soul. Free my soul. I'm gonna go. So I try to sell that vocally. And to me, that's a four. I, I don't do a lot of mountain music. I don't do very much country. Uh, but that's a four to me. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Uh, light the candles around the world is a four. Beautiful noise is a four. Um, I think I find another Your, four. How about your version of uh, Everybody Loves the Lover? You know, that's, you know, let me tell you, let me tell you, that one is good. And the problem is you can't get it anymore. And that's another one of those two man tunes. Cause you got one guy singing, everybody loves a lover. While the other guys is behind it singing the other part. There's, there's a, there's a counter melody to it. And I forget what it is. Off the top. Cause we lost all of those tunes, all those old, all those old Royal tunes we lost because they were, they were never digitized. They were stuck and we never, we didn't, me and Jerry Counter lost. Our melody that. is, who's the most popular personality? Hey, that's I it. can't help think about no one else but me. He's got Gee, it. I feel just about 10 feet tall. 
having a ball. Yes, you feel oh. just like Holly and a and while that while one person doing that, the other guy, the other caller is doing everybody loves a lover. And, and it was it was a great two man two man routine. And it, it that makes it a four. But I was gonna tell you a true story with this. We've lost all those old ones, all the original, all the old royal stuff, like everybody loves a lover, beautiful brown eyes, Kayla Ray, all those old ones, they were lost. We because me and Jerry didn't keep the masters. And this was before they were digital, so they were only had Good news is, is we found the old two inch tapes and, and uh, I'm in the process now of having them all remixed. So sometime in the next year, we'll be able to put all the old Royal stuff back out digitally. We remixed, uh, I'm gonna do new vocals. I'm gonna have uh, different guys do vocals for me. Uh, and uh, so we're gonna do all new vocals and remix all the old stuff and we'll put it out sometime in the coming year. I've got two more comments here before we open it up to everybody. Um, one is a reiteration of what you said from Kip Garvey. He says, be careful not to fall in the trap of buying a piece of music just because you hear a very successful caller do it. Uh, all pieces of music don't fit every caller and you've stressed that. And uh, I'm going to ask you the question from Mark that you, I've been told that you hate being asked. What was that? Not the last one, but six before that. What was that song you played? <laughs> Phil Pierce. <laughs> Phil Pierce answered it. He said it was free ride. Right, yeah, that's, that was digital. And for the one that said you like Kayla Ray, uh, that's one of the ones we're putting back out. We have a digital. You know, that's from that Kayla Ray is from a song called. I heard it in England from an original song is by, I forget the group, but it was a call, song called Hands Up. It was called Kayla Ray because when Jerry and I first started World Records, we did our first pad of records, we decided to name them after our children. So the first pad of record was, was Josh, which is his oldest child. The flip was Ricky, which is my oldest child. The next one was, was Kayla Ray, she's my middle, and Jake, who's his second one. The next one was TJ, who was my youngest. Then we ran out of kids. So we had to start naming after pets. Astro was, was um, was Jerry's dog. Uh, Chase was my dog. And now we just name them now. We just, <laughs> we have no rhyme or reason to why we name particular. Uh -huh. <laughs> but when we started, that was, that was the way, that was where all those titles came from, from our kids and animals. Um, I don't know if Glenn, I don't know if your um, microphone is working, but he's asked uh, many songs like Imagine have to be sped up related to the original piece no. of music. How do you present them in such a way uh, to preserve the original feel? Off times a lot of 4-4 four, four music and, and imagine it's, it's recorded in 4-4 four, four. you actually have to slow it down to make it dance good uh, yeah. so comfortable dance rhythm is somewhere in the neighborhood of 124 to 130 uh, so 124 being a little bit on the slow end 130 being a little bit on the fast end so depending on the rhythm of the song because different rhythms feel different you know you, you can have 125 or 126 in a 2-4 song and that rhythm sounds one way and you, you do the same tune in 4-4, four, four, and it sounds, it's just completely different. So you can't just universally say you slow a tune down. Um, Imagine was actually speeded up from the original version. Uh, Imagine is recorded at, now the neat thing with, with new software, and I can tell you, Imagine was recorded at 127.5. And, and the original was probably around 126, 125, 126. Everybody say hello to my wife. Come here and say hello to everybody. Somebody get people this is from Australia. This is my wife. Everybody say hi, Cam. 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 You know you're going to pay for that later, right? I know. I know. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Well, before I, before I open it up, I'd just like to pass on my favorite Tony Oxendine story. That was at one of the early caller schools I was at. It was one of those schools. I don't know if you remember it, but during the patter, you were talking about chanting and learning and how to fill. And at that particular time, we had trouble with the system. And I frisbeed three records, smashing them against the wall in the hall. And at the end, people loved the tempo change and come up to ask what patter that was because they loved the way it kept changing because I was tempo acapella and putting new records on and the other one was when uh shut up and kiss me came out on shakedown and everybody was talking about the whisper and i said well i just get up and wail on it everybody loves it and I, wow shut up. and you walked up lifted the needle and said i hate you and walked away best compliment i was ever given so tony i want to say thank you very much for coming in and let's open it up to the floor okay i can hang around for a bit 
Hey, Tony. Yes, we have a, a lot of dancers that seemingly can't dance the tempo to a, the singing call the way it's recorded. They're either, you know, infirmed or <laughs> whatever. I guess we're all getting old and fat. What about changing the tempo of a singing call to make it slower for the dancers? You know, I call, you know, if I were to, if when I go to South Texas or South Florida and I call the retirees to, to the really old people, I call the same tempo. I, I very seldom, the only time I change my tempo is, is if uh, external conditions for if the floor is slippery or if, or if we're on carpet or something, I change my tempo. The trick is it, it's all about the rhythm, some rhythms, dance really fast. Some rhythms dance slower. It's, it's all about the feel. Dancers feel the rhythm, you know, and, and, and so some rhythms feel different than others. Some dance slower, some dance faster. Um, be sure that, if, that you don't say, for instance, here we go. I mean, I mean, let me do something here right, and I'll quit doing world records for you. I'll do, I'll do something different. I'll do it. I'll do something that's not a royal record. And, and uh, here's, here's the most perfect song that's ever existed. This is all wrapped up in you on rhythm. All right, now I can do this song. I want to get to the fit. I want to get to the figure part again because if I do a 64 beat figure and I take the dance, sometimes we do it to the dancers. We don't give them enough time to do the figure. So here's here's the difference. And I'm coming to, coming to the figure now. So this one thing about giving the dancers the first beat of the musical phrase, then I can do a 64 beat figure because I'm all wrapped up. Here's the figure in you. Head square through. Boom. Two, three, four. Do, son, do. Swing through. Boy, run right. Half tag. Now, feel that figure? Now, same figure. You tell me which one. That would give 64 beats. You're coming in, I'm going to do the same thing. Because I. Those heads square through. I've taken six beats away from them. So they may very well be dancing on tempo. And because I took the, the initial six beats away from them, if I continue to do that same figure, they're not going to have time to do all the calls. If I'm going to not give them the first beat of the phrase, I need to take out something to make the figure 60 beats or 58 beats or whatever it might be. If they don't get the first beat of the phrase, so sometimes it's, it's not they can't dance the tempo. We're not giving them enough time. We're not giving enough beats of music to do the call. It, it, sometimes it's our fault, not theirs. Uh, but there's very little difference. All right, if this song is recorded at 127. Now, the, we used to dance it at 132 and it was recorded. It was 132. I put it down to 127. But there's very little difference between 132 and 122. It's 10 steps in 60 seconds. That's the difference. That's how many beats per minute you walk. So think about it in that manner. If you do one thing and it's 128 beats, I hear callers tell me, oh, no, 128 is too fast. Well, I do everything at 124. Well, that's wrong. The tempo of the music should be based on the rhythm of the song. Some songs dance fast at 124. Others dance slow at 128, depending on the rhythm. But it's, the, the, my point is, is that the difference between 128 and 124 is four steps in 60 seconds, which is nothing. Most callers cannot, if you played a song, could not distinguish the tempo between 124 and 128. 99.4% of the callers around could not distinguish something, could not distinguish the difference in that. You wouldn't know. And, and dancers don't. So consequently, I don't change my, unless, unless, the, actually, unless the floor is slick or on carpet, I don't change my tempo. Tony? Yes. One thing, one thing that I've done on recording some songs I'm thinking, of, I can't think of the name of the song. It was a Charlie Pride song. But the lyrics were so busy, you just couldn't spit them out fast enough. I actually recorded them at 122, and people thought they were going fast because of the, all the lyrics involved. I'm going to, have, have you guys done, you, you guys have done a, a, um, a music session already, haven't you, Mel? Uh, not particular on music. We've done, music theory talked about beat tempo well, and what, we haven't had a practical me, i've been trying to get someone in you, because we've had show, problems with it show you the difference in rhythms hang on a second how how one how changing the, the rhythm of a, the rhythm makes the song feel different uh this is a song you can all go by it's on um 
it's on hi-hat now, I think. So here's the song. This song is, is the song, I Want a Girl Just Like the Girl That Married Dear Old Dad. It's recorded at 126.4. Exactly. I'm looking at my computer. 126.4. Here's the song at 2-4 rhythm. I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. I want a girl just... Feel that rhythm? Read dear old dad. This is 2-4 rhythm, boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck, which I think is the best rhythm we have to dance to. Here, now, it's going to come on. Here's the, here's the end of it. And it's going to change here from 2-4 from to 4-4. Four, four. Here comes a 4-4 four, four rhythm. Now, listen, same tempo, 126.4. Listen. Please. This is 126.4. This is 4-4 four, four rhythm. Now, how slow does this feel? So the problem is, there's there's nothing there's no instrument telling you where to put your foot. So we're gonna take the same four four rhythm. It goes boom, boom, and now this next one is gonna be what we call cut time. It's four four rhythm, but it's gonna have a bass guitar that tells you when to put your foot. And listen to the difference. Same rhythm, four four rhythm, same song, same tempo. It's gonna add a bass guitar to it. Listen how this feels. Now this is what the dancers do. They feel the rhythm. Listen to this. Please. Same tempo. How does that feel? Does it feel like this? Does it, does it feel like that? Here it is. Play for me. So that's, let me, that's why, that's what rhythm effect, Here's let me get. I told I spoke to you earlier about about um, six eight rhythm. This I, this I think is a really good dance rhythm. This six eight goes. Feel where you put your foot. That's that's the rhythm. It's where you put your foot. Goes like. Want to guess the tempo of that? Listen to it and tell me what tell me what the tempo is. Anybody want to guess? 124. One, I heard 124. Anybody else want to guess? I'll give you a hint now. It, it sounds faster than what it is. Most people say 130 or so. It's 124. But can you tell that's, that's what difference? That's what. What if you try to do a square dance tune in this rhythm? No, that's the wrong song. Hang on. Let me go back to the. Go back here again, and I take the same. Oh hell! Well, maybe I won't show you. There, there, what? there. Let's take. Let me show you. Can you imagine trying to dance to what? Waltz rhythm is three four. Can you imagine trying to dance in, in waltz rhythm? Go like this. This is um. This is one twenty. This is one twenty six. Listen. Play band, please. Why are you not playing? What did I do? Oh, I could hang on. Well, hell, I did something. Have you checked the disconnect knock between the chair and the keyboard? All right, here we go. Here's this is 126.4. But the reason it feels so slow is because it's waltz rhythm. It's three quarter time. So it's all, see, it's all about feel. So some songs feel fast at 126, some feel slow at 126. Uh, Mike put a comment up here, which I think is absolutely relevant, not just to what you're doing today and what you do when you're calling, but to every caller out there. Um, what he wrote was your energy level may be a two, but everyone else seems to be a four or five. And that's mainly comes from the love of your music, the love of what you do and the way you put it over for, and it's part of the entertainment thing. And that's something every caller should strive for. If you don't love the music, if you don't feel the music, if you don't, doesn't make you feel happy, it's not going to make the dancers feel happy. And I could not express it. That comments in the chat to everyone, read it, take it, copy it, keep it as a word of wisdom. I don't have a single solitary piece of music on my computer that I don't use. If it's, if it's on my computer, I call to it guaranteed, you know, 
probably, I've listened to it enough in the car that I can tell you what instruments are where and if it's got a key change and where the key change is. Because that's important to me. It's important to me for me to know musically what this tune is doing. But I, you know, it's, and it's work. You know, I mean, you can't just pick it up and, and go, but it's, it's worth it in the long run. Like anything else, you get, you get out of it what you put into it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're 23 minutes past the hour. Um, Tony did finish on time, but the conversation was just too good to interrupt. Uh, Tony is going to stick around for a little bit longer. If you have any questions or if you want any comments, I have any comments, queries that you want to ask him. But by all means, if you have other things to go, please don't feel obligated to stay. The sessions will be recorded. Uh, our technician is Mark Hart. He not only records them, posts them. Uh, Tony, if you could make your PowerPoint uh, presentation available as well, that would be absolutely fantastic. Do do that? Yeah, just email it to me and I'll get it over to Mark. Mark will put that on the website as well. Uh, everything's available on OC Callers. Uh, we do have a few more sessions coming up very shortly in the near term, as I've already mentioned, Betsy. Next week, we're hoping to have um, a few representatives from Caller Lab here to talk about Caller Lab. It's something that a few people have been asking about. What is it? Why should we join? What can we do? And how can we help to change things for the better? Um, the session's called What Is It and How Can You Help? But tune in. That should be very interesting. Um, following that, Ken Rituzzi is going to be with us about teaching and the teachable and unteachable moments that you may have in square dancing. Mm -hmm. What do you do with them? Betsy God is with us on the 14th of March uh, on programming. On the 21st of March, there's no session because that's my daughter's wedding. And then Barry, Barry's here somewhere. Barry is going to come in and talk to us about Hi. notes. Note services, which is a caller's friend, but it also has the advantages and disadvantages that are geared to note services. Barry's been involved with note services since uh, before Kip Garvey was calling. I think that was before the advent of paper. So uh, he's got a lot of wisdom to pass on. Uh, Mike Sikorsky is going to be here with us after that about site calling versus site resolution, two completely different topics and a very controversial topic. So stay tuned for that one. I expect Mike to have a lot of questions and queries. Kip Garvey about applying technical zeros and transitions. And then Bob Elling is gonna be with us on modules for a specific purpose or modules with a purpose. So a lot of really good stuff coming up. Tony, I wanna to express my sincere and total appreciation for coming in and spending time with us today. And thank you very much. Absolutely, my pleasure. This was great. Have me back again, this was fun. Anytime. Thank you, Tony. My pleasure, guys, thank you. Uh, the floor is open. Yes, um, Tony and Mel, I enjoyed the little piece where um, Tony explained the difference between his voice range and Mike Sikorsky's. Possibly we could have a session on that sort of thing sometime in the future. Well, what do you think, Tony, Mike, you feel like doing a duet? <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I have worked together. Uh, I know you have. We have definitely worked together, and he makes me sound really good. The whole thing is, he doesn't, doesn't always sing in the lower register, that, but that's his forte. When we work together, he doesn't sing in that lower register. You know, he sings, he, he can actually sing in a normal register. But he's well, I, sing, I, sing, I sing a baritone, but my one of my great weaknesses is I don't sing harmony at all. Tony can find harmony in a cantaloupe in the grocery store, so. Uh, <laughs> Fine and me. One thing I do is generally when I sing, it's melody, but I tend to hit center note pretty well. And that makes it easy for the harmony singer to come in and find you and just compliment. Um, but but uh, Tony does both. He sings great lead and he also sings great harmony. He can do he can do both both of them. Well, if we are going to set up a session like that, it's we're probably going to have to have a couple of pre-sessions to get used to. Uh, microphones and harmony across the distances. <laughs> That's going to be tough. You know, We've tried that once before. It did not work. <laughs> you know, one of the hardest no. things, uh, you, you, it's, to me, it's, it's really difficult to teach harmony. But my thing is, is they're, they're so, I would love, I love to find callers that can sing the lead and stay on it. Mm. Many times callers, and because we work alone, it doesn't matter sometimes what notes you hit if you're working by yourself, if you're only, and so you can stray off the melody. The problem with trying to sing harmony, if someone strays off the melody, it messes you up because in my head, I hear the tenor before I even hear the lead. I hear the tenor. So if somebody's singing something that's not the, the lead, it messes me up tremendously. I can't, 
it's, it's hard to sing with someone like, so I really appreciate guys that can carry a strong melody and, and stay on and get on the lead and stay there. A lot they, of like to chase, they like to chase. Yeah. It, a lot of gospel. It, yeah, you're singing, you're singing the lead, and then somebody starts singing harmony. It's like, oh, boom, we're up there with them, singing harmony with them. Yeah. See, yeah. Most, a lot of callers think singing harmony is just singing high. There's a, a world of difference. That's not necessarily true. There's a world of difference between singing high and singing harmonics. Sometimes you can sing below. Yes, you can sing a harmony below. You're absolutely right. Yeah. The Oak Ridge Boys are a good example of that one. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, well, that's because. So you got you got somebody singing baritone you got somebody singing lead you got somebody singing tenor and you got somebody singing melody that's the that's the four true parts what one thing that uh, I, I think that you needed to st uh, stress a little bit more what you said about a singing call about being able to sing that bottom note and that top note comfortably and if you can't then you know what you have to do to to to, uh, to make up for it, that would be a good session for uh, someone like you guys to uh, to do. Yeah, it's it's really hard. You you got to you got to listen to the entire song to find out where the lowest note is and the highest note. And and listen, we're really fortunate now. There's more music being produced now than at any point that I can remember. Uh, there's just a lot of square inch music coming out. So if something if once you know you'll be surprised. Sometimes you hear something that a tune will come out on, on more than one label. And you may not be able to do it on one label and, and be able to do it on the other just because the song was arranged differently, you know, depending, depending on how the song was arranged. Uh, but, yeah, that, you know, you got a lot of choices. You know, it's not really worth a whole lot of work for me if, if, if I can't do the song well. If I'm going to struggle on hitting a note, chances are I'm not going to do that song. I, I take you back to something that I think it was you and Bill Harrison said together about high notes and low notes and working together was you should never buy – a record where you have to hit a high note. You should always buy a record where you can sing the high note and sing the low note, never hit it, because hit it is hit and miss. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'd like to ask uh, Tony a question, please. Go ahead. Um, thank you for illustrating what you meant about the different rhythms and the dancers feeling the rhythm and how different that can be. I just wondered how you achieved it when you were illustrating it. How were you changing the rhythm? Is I, the, the, the tune itself is, is, is on hi-hats called Rhythm Examples and it's, the same song. It's, it's played that way. It's played in all the different rhythms. It's, it's a great tune song for all you guys to buy just, just so that you can experience the difference in the rhythms. Uh, so in, it, it's. You know, I think he has. It. I think Buddy Buddy Weaver has it for sale. I think. I guess you can probably let Buddy get it. Right. And it's high hat rhythms. It's called rhythm examples. Rhythm examples. Thank you. I don't know the number, but it's on high hat. No, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, six five two. Thank you. It's also another one. Rawhide does a rhythm examples, which is um sixteen twenty five. Thank you. And no, I don't have those in my head. I just looked it up. <laughs> I was impressed. <laughs> don't be. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I got to go. It was great again, Mel and, and uh, Tony and all the, all the comments was wonderful. Good to see y'all. You too, Rob. You take care. Rick, although you come across as Liam. Oh, <laughs> my grandson, he... Uh, He muted you. My, your my grandson uh, had to have a uh, school here. Oh, okay. Because you look like a Liam. <laughs> Just don't kidnap his daughter. How's that? Good guy. <laughs> Bye now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, does anybody have any more questions for Tony or any comments, anything you'd like to discuss with him? Tony, uh, for those of you that live in the States, Tony, I believe you're scheduled to do the next New England Caller School that's coming up here in October, isn't it? I was supposed to do this past October. He doesn't have this past October. But I'm oh, doing I, thought, past I, thought, I thought you were scheduled for the one that's coming up. I don't think so. I do Maybe apologize I'm... for that. Maybe. Tony, I, I do I do a question, and I'm asking on behalf of I th of everybody else. When it's it's obvious that you love the music, you're not doing a song, you're not doing a singing call or using a patter unless you really love that music. 100%. And 
and then that that to me that's absolutely obvious so how do you select what do you listen for what tweaks you to take it from oh hey that's a nice piece of music to wow i love this and i'm i'm going to pursue this and make it the best i can it can be with me what what is it that triggers that in you so other people can search for their own form of greatness that way i honestly yes. I'm, when I said earlier, I take the, the music that comes in, and, I, and I'm real fortunate from, from a lot of guys. I get most of the music that's recorded, I get complimentary copies of almost everything. So there's very seldom a day that goes by that I don't get some new music from somebody. I wait a bit, and then I put however many pieces I have, and I put it on a flash drive, and I listen, you know, and I'm in my car a lot. So I listen in my car. Some songs just reach out and grab me. And, and if they reach out and grab, if we're talking to singing calls, if it reaches out and grab me, then I listen, then I put that separately and I listen to it over and over and over and over again until I find something that, that I feel fits me with the tune. And, and I don't know how to describe that. It just sometimes, sometimes, sometimes a song may take me weeks before I develop what I want to do. I hear something in my head that I want to do, but it may take me weeks to develop that. Uh, sometimes I'll do a song and, I, and I'll pick it up. I hear it. I like it immediately. I'll do it the next night. I'll listen to it four or five or six times and I'll do it the next night. Uh, but sometimes a tune will, will, will stick with me for a long time before I, before I try to do anything with it. I, and and it's, because I hear things, sometimes I hear things that I can't do and I have to work out a way to do them. I hope that makes any sense. <laughs> That's your, song. your song, Mike. Um, uh, Forever Young took me, I spent weeks working up a routine for that before I ever did it live. It took me forever to do it. But it's, it's one of the ones that I, that, that I keep in my repertoire. It's, it's been with me now since you recorded it, however long that's been. I still do it. And I still get requests for it. That was the very first singing call, very first piece of music I ever put out on my, on Mesa Apache Productions. Uh, the, the very first one. And, as, and after I first heard you do it, I didn't do it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that, that routine took me weeks to, to work out how I wanted. I could hear it, but I couldn't do it initially. Tony, can you talk a little bit about uh, selecting a good figure for a song, particularly that one that you were doing earlier, Imagine? <clears throat> there's a melody line, and then there's a lot of, space where you wouldn't sing, sing any lyrics so how how would you select a good figure for that this song now i am got to go back and pick it up again um this song to me spoke it said when i first did it it said grand square in the beginning that's the, you know i knew that i knew that uh one four and seven was going to be grand square uh, i knew that then the figure the figure part where the hell did i put that oh dear Oh, shucks. I have no idea where I stored it now. Uh, wait a minute. I got it over here, maybe. Maybe. Hang on a second. Let's see if I have it over here. Um, the figure for that one, uh, it said, I, again, I listen to it and wait till it tells me something. And I say, okay, every singing call in the world is going to start out either with somebody with the heads doing something or the heads promenading halfway and doing something. Uh, I don't get real creative on singing calls and on the figures. And the reason I don't is because I try to sell music to the average caller and the average caller does not change the figure for the singing call. And many callers will not use a tune if it's a figure that they're not, they're not used to. So you're not going to hear me put a figure on a tune that says heads, heads reverse single file promenade halfway and down the middle and left square through three and a half. It ain't going to come out of my lips <laughs> to, on, on the flip side of the record because Caller, uh, many callers will, will look at that tune and say, I can't dance, I can't do the figure, so they don't buy the tune. So I try to put things that, that fit. This to me, this to me just said grand square. That and the fact, again, I know all the lyrics for the song, and I think the lyrics are just beautiful for this song. And I had this, I had this fiddle player who was the country music musician of the year playing lead i wanted i wanted people to hear it so that's why i did grand square side space grand square just fits can you tell that just it just feels good to say grand side space grand square right there the figure i use again to me it's got to say either head square through 
or something like that, or hedge promenade half and do something. And this to me, coming in then, now how, how do I know that this is coming in to the end of number one? Anybody want to tell me real quick? Think about the mm -hmm. reason I know is because the fiddle is playing the lead and the fiddle plays the lead on number one. So I know I'm coming to the end of number one now, getting ready to come into number two. First figure's coming up right here. The head square through. Do son, do one time. Swing through. See, I'm selling the harmonica. That's what I'm selling. If you listen, I'm trying to sell the harmonica with my figure. Let me put it back here. Here's coming in, coming in number one, coming in number two. Head square through. You do sign do. See, I'm singing the lead the same time that the piano is, is playing the lead. So when I hush, the harmonica comes through. So I'm selling the harmonica on that. So I try to find a figure that lets me sell that harmonica. So Tony. Make sense? Just, and I know this is probably putting you on the spot and is going to be very awkward for you to do, but can you do that with a chant filler and just show exactly what the difference is and why it doesn't work the other way around? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll do it. I'll do it from the beginning and just, because I see guys sight call their figures a lot of times and, and they just put stuff out and it just doesn't fit. To me, this, this does not fit, but I'll make it fit. It just doesn't seem right. So same song, different way. Play for me, man. Will now those four ladies chain across that ring go? Turn that lady chainer right back home. All join hands, circle to the left and move it, walking around now. Have a man that corner when you weave around the line. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say that I'm gonna get to the figure part now, but I'm not the only one. Hey man, the head square through in the middle and you get to four you go. All over that corner, girl with a do see do one time around. Swing through in the middle of the night and then the boy you're gonna run to the right. Bend the line and her mind will let through when you turn that girl around and flutter wheel. The more you dance, the better you feel. You slide through, swing on the corner and you promenade. I'm paying big money for those guys to play and I've covered up everything they're doing. And at my bet, you know, and I think, you know, like all of you, I think I'm the damn, I'm the best damn singer in, in, in square dancing. You want to ask me? I think I am. Everybody should think that. Not that I, not that I really am, but I can tell you that at my best, I am nowhere near what these guys can play. These guys are playing this, 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 they're playing. These are the professional musicians. They're always going to hit a true note. I'm not, I'm not, I can't hit a true note every time. As good as I think I am, I can't hit a true note every time. These guys hit it every time. This music never changes. Did I do what you asked? Is that right? Yeah. Um, because that completely <clears throat> changed the character of the song, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah. I've got Claudia and Betsy. Okay. Um, um, you showing the uh, chanting uh, has proved a sentence that one of my color coaches said once. If you do chanting, you end up with a killer filler because you kill the song. And you doing what you did just then just proved what she said. You because you did kill the song. I felt rushed. Yes. It's a nice and smooth song, and I felt being rushed through the song. But now, some songs say you should chant. Some songs feel better so, when you do that stuff in the middle, the ratter chatter stuff in the middle. It sells the song. Not in that particular case. Yeah. I'm trying to find one that I that I chant on. Anybody remember I, Gold Rush? Yeah, I was going to ask you about this anyway. One of the first songs that I came across uh, of yours that really impressed me on how you can build the song up. I don't know if you agree now, but it was one of those wonderful songs. And by the end of it, you feel like you're dancing twice as fast. That was Ratter Chatter. I haven't done that song in in forever. I don't even have, I don't even, I don't think I have it on my computer. <laughs> well, while you're searching, Tony, I want to put forth the theory that what you did for the figure was to pick calls that were longer, you know, head square through, do -si do swing through, rather than heads touch a quarter, walk and dodge, blah, 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 yeah, which would make you have to chatter. 
Yes, 100% correct. And if I were doing a plus dance, this would be a beautiful time to put a relay the Ducey in the figure and just allow him to dance to that music. That, you know, that's, that's the purpose of one of those songs, of one of those figures, rather. Um, and I, and I, don't have, I don't have the um, that song you were asking about, that one of those wonderful songs. That, that, is, that was rather chat. But sometimes it fits. You know, sometimes you, you want to, you want to, to make the, the rather chatter in there just fits the song. I was trying to find one that I rather chattered on and I could show you. Um, I used to do it on Gold Rush. You guys remember Gold Rush on Lumac? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's the figure we use on Gold Rush. This, Jerry, Jerry and I had a routine for this one. And it's rather chatter. Come on. Come on. <coughs> Four little lady in a promenade At one time you go bumping on around A back home and spin, whirl around the ring And then you're gonna join a band and circle left You get a walk, 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 and then around the ring And I'm gonna let the old left hand And you walk right in and around a left grand right And a left and around a left grand And a hand over hand around you go And swing a little girl around And you promenade her home I wind her and dine her The figure's coming up Well, the gold rush is over And the square dance is on Two, three, four when you head square through you in the middle, then you muddled in the middle of the tune of the fiddle to the corner of the ring, and then you do sando. Now the cool thing about that was we were square throughing four four hands to the tune in the middle to the tune of the fiddle. There ain't even a fiddle in there. But that was the rather chatter. That, that, now that's that but, but we did that, you do that, I did that every time we do gold rush with all the rather chatter stuff. And it sells that tune. That I have a um Back in the day, not now, because nobody's selling it, but back in the day, a square dance gold record was determined as something that sold 25,000 copies. Who came up with that? I don't know. But I have a gold record, for because I recorded Gold Rush. I have a gold record on my wall for, for 25,000 sales of that song. That's been a long time. I recorded that back in the early 80s. It's yeah, been around. The, the sad part is, although it's beautiful that there's a lot of new music out there, good, good sales is now considered anything over 100. Oh God, you, you'd be lucky if you can sell 99.4% of the labels out there never sell 100 copies of anything. When it, it, and it's heyday, and it, you know, if you want to ask a caller, if you want a caller to lie to you, ask him how many, how many squares he had at his last dance, how, many much, how much money he made, and if he's a record producer, how many records he sells, if you want to hear a good lie. But I can tell you that in the heyday, back in the 80s, it was not unusual for tunes, to, when we had records, it was not unusual for tunes to routinely sell 1,500, 2,000 copies. Uh, in our heyday, Royal Records, we had, we had a standing order of 1,800 at our best, which means that no matter what we press, we sold 1,800 of it. Now, now, a number one selling CD, number one selling MP3, uh, sells 20, 25. I remember the dances when I started in Germany. We'd get a guest caller up or they'd do a song and then the first break, there'd be a lineup over the three record stores that were out there. And, you know, they usually brought in about 200 copies of each record and it was callers yeah. and dancers. They were sold out by the first, yeah. but, you but know, no first more. intermission of the, the first day. Callers just don't buy music the way we used to. I and mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons for that. There's still, there's still quite a bit of piracy. Um, the other thing is, is back when we were selling uh, 1,800 tunes, records were a dollar. You know, now they're 10, eight or 10. Uh, you know, so there's all kinds of reasons we have fewer callers, but the few callers we have are, are buying fewer, fewer pieces of music now. So, yeah. And dancers well, don't buy music anymore. Pardon? And dancers don't buy music anymore. No, no dancers have not bought music in, in forever since, since records went away. Yeah. yeah. But that was it. Back in the day, you know, the only people that recorded music were, were big famous callers, you know, quote, for lack of a better word, national callers. Those are the only people that. And so when they came to town, they sold records. You know, now everybody, everybody's recording. You know, there's, there's not anybody that's not recording anymore. So there's there's no there's no it's not a big deal to record a. Uh, record anymore most callers you know i own royal records me and jerry did and now i do but most callers have no idea that i have royal records they don't know i'm not associated with royal records like that some if you've been dancing a while you might know but but most callers do not not anymore but you know but man when i came up when i started calling man when you mentioned chaparral i thought gary shoemake ken bauer jerry haig beryl maine 
Uh, you know, that's, you know, when you said rhythm records, man, it was Pat Barber, Wade Driver, Bob Byer. You know, that was, they just came to, you know, that was, those were the guys. Now it's not so much. You know, uh, if I were to say, name me, pick a label, you know, <laughs> name me somebody who calls on it. Most callers can't. ESP, Craig Rowe. Yes. Larry Paul yeah. Markham, Elmer. Absolutely. And all those Craig callers, Carlos. all those guys call anymore. Daryl. Why do you think that uh, callers are buying fewer records these days? What's uh, what's the cause of that? I think part of it is, is the expense of the tune now. Uh, callers are making the same amount of money now that we made 20 years ago. You know, and, and, I, and I give you, I'll tell you what. I call, that's my wife telling me I have to leave. Um, <laughs> for instance, I have a deal with the local clubs in the area that if I call, if you want me to call a dance, I will call for you for whatever you pay your club caller. As long as you don't make it a special dance. If you make it a special dance, that's different. But if it's a club dance, I will call for whatever you call for your caller. I make, and, and listen, I, I've been calling for the same club for, oh God, since the 80s. And I make $10 more a night now than I did in the 80s. And so I know they pay, their, they pay their, I don't know about you guys now, but in, in South and North Carolina, callers don't make a whole hell of a lot of money. You know, they, they pay me $60 to come in and call a dance for them. They paid me 50 uh, 15 years ago, they pay me 60, $60. Now that's why they pay their club caller. Well, now if all you're making is when, when records are a dollar and you make $50, well, hell you can buy a lot of records. Now music is eight and $10 and you make $50. It doesn't go as far. And back then gas was, you know, 80 cents. And, and now it's, you know, two, two dollars, two fifty, whatever it might be. Everything's more expensive, you know? And, and so callers have, have less money to spend. Plus now, back when I came up, when I, everybody was selling so, so much music, there were only a half, maybe three or four or five labels. There was Red Boot, Rhythm, Chaparral, Ranch House, ESP, and then there were the rest of them, you know. And so I just got everything that these guys put out. Well, now there's how many labels, you know, 75, <laughs> you know, everybody. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more competition now. So everybody, there's more music and everybody's selling less. I remember when Royal first came out and uh, I think one of the first tunes I heard on, on Royal was uh, somebody like me. And I thought, Oh my gosh, this is going to change everything. That was the first and time I, you ever recorded. I think I uh, wore out the needle at Mike Sikorsky senior's house trying to listen to that thing. And yeah, I, I actually like some of the old uh, Royal uh, an awful lot the older stuff that you guys well, did ladies and gentlemen i'm not going to be overly rude here howard i didn't know if you had your hand up if you're raising your hand or just scratching your head so howard coburn um no you're fine uh tony i think your boss is cueing yes, you I go. so i would love to thank you definitely for coming in sticking around yes we're definitely going to ask you back uh anytime anytime at all thank you and, guys uh, hey, it was great it was great being with you y'all take care you guys take care. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thank you much, Tony. Much appreciated. Bye. And Thank to everybody you, that's Tony. stuck around, we do have Caller Lab coming up next week. Uh, representatives from Caller Lab. Uh, Teresa is going to be here, as are a couple other. I think Bill is probably going to be here as well. And uh, just talking about Caller Lab, and we've got a number of really, really good sessions coming up. Mike Sikorsky, I think you're still with us here somewhere. Mike is coming up to talk about the controversial topic, the difference between site calling and site resolution. Uh, I'm getting a lot of queries about, well, aren't they the same? Well, no, they're not the same. And a whole bunch of side discussions. And I have tried really, really hard and so far successful not to answer that by saying, well, tune in when Mike's here and hopefully he will answer all of your questions. Barry's you coming in for that talk. yet? Sorry? You have a date yet? Uh, yeah, I did send you the date. Hang on a second. I'll just... I don't recall it. Oh, I'm... I don't know what's going on, but we've got you on the 4th of April. Okay, uh, that's the, the fact that's gonna be absolutely perfect. Uh, Believe it or not, we're traveling. We're going back to Virginia to see Janet's 102-year-old mother yeah, uh, yeah, for a while. Yeah, you you said that and the I actually have was a, no good and the 11th was no good. Yeah, and then I actually have a gig uh, in Utah. So after that. So, so the 4th of April. That, I've actually got a gig. Yep. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot that don't these days. 
That's the difference between the site scheduling and site booking. <laughs> the which? Site the, the, scheduling and site confirm and site confirmation, two totally oh, yeah. different things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I do I do post the um, the schedule up on the web pages when I put the notifications for those of you that um, want it via email. I do put the schedule on there, and it's it's a dynamic schedule, but that's what it is at the moment. So if you have any suggestions, as always, or things that you would like to see or presenters you'd like to hear from, we try our best to get in contact with anybody on any of these topics. And uh, feel free, but this session is closed. Feel free to stick around if you want to talk about. The mic is open for anything or any types of discussions you want to talk about. If you want to look at choreography like we're doing in the pre-session at 7, uh, by all means, we can stick around for a little bit longer. But thank you very much. And to Mark Hart, who is probably out getting another coffee right now, uh, thank you very much for posting and saving and doing all the recording and putting them up on the OC Callers website. So you can stick around if you want, or you can go. Yeah. All right. Good night. Bye, Susie. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Simon. Good night. Yeah. Nice to see you. See you, Simon. See you, Susie. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's some ridiculous time over there in the UK. So just, just on midnight. Midnight. Might be midnight in UK. It's one after midnight in Germany. Nighty night. Betsy. It, it, it looks like you might have a few additional points to add on to your programming session. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was taking mental notes. I have a technical uh, uh, Zoom question. I, I'm going to head off and have breakfast now. Um, uh, catch you guys you. later. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care, Barry. Barry. Take care, Barry. Barry I Bye. Oh, sorry. I, I have a technical uh, Zoom question. Is that... Who is that, Michael or Chris? Uh, me, Chris. Hi, Chris. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, when uh, when Tony was doing the session just now, was uh, he had uh, I guess he had two computers logged in, and uh, was um, was there a third party involved also in? Because uh, it sounded like sometimes he was uh, asking somebody to do something. Um, no, what was what was happening in there initially? His setup that he was using for the class and the other Zoom sessions, uh, he had the two computers going that he would be doing that, and he'd have the music and his mic coming through one computer. But for some reason today, uh, it wasn't doing a transfer. So what we had him do was he was only be logged in on one computer. So what we had him do was log in on his computer that he had the PowerPoint presentation on as a separate Tony Oxendine. And then his music was on the second computer. And once we got the microphone sorted out that the one he was doing, the PowerPoint and everything else was all shut off, um, it, it started working. And then right at the tail end, his music, his music changed and then he was doing a, a pickup. But I think that was because a lot of people were unmuted and it was a feedback coming back and forth off his speaker into his microphone because his speakers are set back in another room. So that's, that's why I was getting a triple pickup and it sounded like a third party coming through. Oh, okay. But when he was when he was uh, putting on the music and stuff, he was just uh, uh, punching on one of his two computers. That's all. Yeah, he he was punching in on SquareView. He had it all all um, programmed in. He he runs that through his uh, uh, MA two twenty into his computer with the lead, and then that's the out. Uh huh. And how it all hooks up, well, that's beyond me. I still haven't figured out how to hook mine up properly now. And uh, still one of these days, got to figure out how to try and get two callers that live in different parts in the world to do harmony for that session. That <laughs> but, sounds uh, really hard because the, uh, the uh, just because of the light speed and the other lag issues between the two different guys is not going to work. Uh, we, we tried it once on Skype. It worked. And then we tried it here. I uh, had three people trying to do harmony. Oh my God, it was, I mean, I have heard cats that have been frozen going through a bandsaw that sounded better than that. 
I noticed no. that uh, one-way things like uh, uh, one, not that I am suggesting anybody ever use Facebook for anything, but but one-way feeds like people do on uh, Facebook and things like that. I think those uh, have have some way they're able to do multiple uh, uh, you know multiple uh, singers at the same time and have it work. For, for some reason on even on Zoom, if you're doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. It seems to work. You you can actually practice stuff with one on one, depending on how good your your internet connections and everything are. If you're on fiber or or whatnot, and you have a really good upload download speed, it seems to work. But if like if you're on Telstra and Optus, even here in Australia, although they use the same line, they're two different providers, it doesn't work. No, yes, my message God. Tony, uh, and I'll do it privately because I don't think he got it before he had to drop off the session, but what I suggested to him, if he wanted to do this, was I would record three or four square dance singing calls and just send him the track. Now, if he did that, he could say, he could, for instance, play my vocal for the opener, the grand square, the circle left stuff, whatever, whatever it is, and then he could play that again and explain how he found the harmony note in that. I was actually thinking along the same line of having him do a, a harmony on the on the melody on the melody line or the, the melody and the counter melody within the singing call and then you filling in with the lead and then vice versa so you could see what they were separately and then see how they actually blend together but I didn't know how that would actually Well work. he's he, he's good enough that he could uh, do that with my track then mute the track and then he could sing his exact same notes a cappella, so you could hear them isolated. And so that would work also. I'd, I think he would do that easier, actually, than trying to sing a harmony note when there's no melody singer to go with. Yeah. Because, because right. he hears the music, but he also hears where that note, that, the person I don't, singing I don't it think, is. I don't think Tony hears music. I think Tony feels, lives, and breathes music. It, it becomes part of his soul when he's calling. I mean, you can just, you can see it in him. It's not a matter of hearing. Hearing is the lowest part of his sensation when it comes to music. It just, he is music when he calls. I, I absolutely and, uh, agree. I, you are, I completely agree. And, and usually there is a melody line in, uh, played by an instrument so he can harmonize to that. No, it sounds great. If you if you and Tony want to um, work together and set set a presentation up like that, I am more than happy to book it in. I would love to sit on it. I'll talk with him see if we see if he wants to do it that way. And if he does, we'll get a date scheduled and work with you. Fantastic. There's an awesome, there's an awesome video of you and Tony, Mike, uh, from your Vegas session online on YouTube. Uh, Boogie Grass Band. If you guys doing that one together. And some other videos from that session. I remember what singing call it was? Maybe you could refer it to everybody. Boogie Grass Band. Boogie Grass Band. It's where Tony actually does the actual, uses the lyrics from the song in the middle, in the open, in the middle, in the break. But it's, uh, oh, I don't know, in 2010, 2012, something like that, you guys in Vegas. I YouTube think there's just, a few out there of you two together yeah. in Rivco as well. Yeah, there's 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 Rivco videos. Uh, I don't recall that he and I ever did harmony at a Rivco. We might have, but I know we did in Vegas. Well, I'm going to head off. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoyed it, and catch you next week. Thanks much, Roz. See you next time. Yeah. I have a, I have you another question. It, Ange. No, I think she was just saying goodbye. Yes, Chris. Um, uh, Tony mentioned um, uh, that uh, piracy uh, was still a big deal, and I wonder if um, uh, if somebody can comment on what they think uh, the. You know the numbers and how bad that you you think by now that people would be uh, uh, not doing that, but uh, uh, what, what what's uh, what what do you think's the, the deal there? In well, in my opinion, there's two sides of piracy. There's the taking the tracks that are out there or the music, stripping the vocals off, and just using 
standard music production, which is becoming more and more frequent. And you're often hearing some recordings that actually have the vocals, the song and the vocals, and they're just calling over the top of them with square dance calling. I know Tony does a couple like that, but I also know that whenever Tony does that, he also gets the um, the permission to do that, the copyright permission from the original artist and buys the, the ability for it. That's the intentional piracy that's going out there. Uh, some people buy karaoke tracks and they use a square dance music. Um, that in itself is a form of secondary piracy. Well, wait a minute now. If, the, uh, if, if, uh, if we have a BMI ASCAP license, all those songs that you're talking about, they're, they're, they're BMI ASCAP licensed. Yeah, yeah, they are. But there's a, there's a BMI ASCAP, there's a performer's license and there's also a production license. And as you buy it, as a performer, if you buy karaoke music for the purpose of karaoke, say in a bar, you've got also got a site license. So let's say you go to Chris Stacy's Bar and Grill on Wednesday night is karaoke night. Chris has paid for his music license through BMI and ASCAP for the use of that material, for the performance of that material, for the purpose of karaoke. And that's like you going to do a performance in a hall. That hall has its own presentation. And sure, no, 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 no. I, I understand how the no, uh, how is, licensing works in general. What I'm saying is, if I'm a if I'm a caller, and uh, and I'm gonna uh, perform any song, I have a performance license from yes. BMI ASCAP to perform any BMI ASCAP music, I believe. Um, not necessarily. You have yeah, to perform it for what its intention is. But I, like I said, I'm not a music producer. I know with GEMA and... I'm not, I'm not talking about producing music yeah, or recording that. music. I'm Chris, not talking Chris, about I'm me mechanicals. I'm talking about performance. Question. I'm trying to answer the question here, Chris. I know with SOCAN, with GEMA and whatnot, the two things were separate. BMI ASCAP is predominantly US, so it may be, may be different on that. So your, your presentation, if it's for square dancing, by all means, it would be. If it was for, if you were doing, uh, you'd need a different type of license and that would be the venue or the festival license. So let's say you were called or you were asked to call it the uh, Riverboat Racing Championships on the Mississippi River and that was a big paid for function. And then people came in to and paid to dance to you at that festival, that would be a slightly different thing. For yeah, yeah, there's uh, the Caller Lab has. I'm, I'm just talking about the normal license that Caller Lab has. Yeah, that's where I'm going, but I've got to explain this because we've got people from all over the place here. When, when, you, when you have a BMI ASCAP license, all of music that is registered with BMI and ASCAP, that's both the pr producer and the performance license, if you have your own BMI ASCAP, you should be able to perform all of that music accordingly. So that that's not an issue of piracy. Where the issue of, of secondary, uh, or sorry, primary piracy is for instance hey chris i really like that song you just did that's absolutely fantastic here um, put it on you know this, that's please. a royal record can you send me a copy of that and you send me a digital copy of that and i start using it that's piracy right sure, certainly yeah absolutely and that and that's that's where we have it. and then you've got the unintentional piracy which is um you know i've got all these well I've, i'm not using these records anymore i've got all these i've already digitized them here you can have the records well, if you take those records and you're using those records, if you haven't got it, but you bought those records, the person that's performing them it didn't buy those records. That's the incidental piracy that's going on with a lot of stuff that is going out there. There's a lot of really good old recordings that are being redone. If they're being redone, that becomes a new record if there's any changes to it. But the ones that are being digitized off the old vinyl and then pass on to somebody else to digitize them, or you digitize and then pass on the copies of the, the vinyl digitized, that's piracy in itself because no Well, yeah, that's because you're making a copy. That's right. And and you're, it's not making the, making the copy is not, it's using that copy for a purpose other than intending. You can make a copy and listen to it all you want. You can make a copy and give it to your friends. But you actually, can't. I, I, don't th I don't think you can actually. I think it's just that nobody ever gets caught. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that would be the, the, the BMI type stuff. Like if you're buying performance records, that's that's a whole different thing. If I make a tape of me calling and I give you a tape of me calling for you to listen to your enjoyment, my license would cover that. But if you start taking that and using it as a dance, ooh, that's a that's a definite no no. And and this is why I say it's a very complex issue. I don't know how you would get the stats because Germany, Japan, Australia, the U.S. is all different depending on what kind of licensing registrations you have. Right. Yeah. But my question was in the context of the comment about record producers having a hard time because people because piracy is uh, still a thing. And and so what I'm asking is, 
the 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 straightforward piracy where somebody is just uh, you know they bought an MP3 from Royal or whoever Riverboat, and then they're just uh, sharing it with their friends, right? That's 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 I believe what we're talking about, and so I'm yeah. I'm I'm curious and uh, astounded that that that's still going on to a large degree, and so I'm wondering if anybody has any idea to what degree that's going on. Nope. I, I wouldn't, but it would be a good idea maybe to get some record producers like Bob and Rob, um, Tony. Um, yeah, well, Bob's on here. Maybe he can uh, jump in. Well, we know it's happening. We can't specifically, you know, nail it down. But I, I, I can tell you that if I put out a new song, that sales are good in Europe, sales are good in Canada, Japan. But in the United States, I'm not selling. That should tell you something. And it's not that it isn't good music. Heck, Tony, Tony did many of the vocals. It's good music, but I think it's a problem that's more common here in the U.S. than it is the rest of the world. Now, Guido, you can verify this. I'm not sure that it's true. But I was told that in Europe, you could be arrested crossing the border, that they would, if you had a computer with music on you, they would want you, you have to be able to prove that you purchased that music. Not that they do it all the time, but spot checking. Does that really um, happen? I, I don't know. Um, that is, well, I know... Uh, for several instances, some proof has to be uh, provided, but no, nobody from GEMA can come and say, show me the records. Um, no. if, they, they can, I don't know if, if it's changed, Guido, but they can ask to see your card. Um, I, I don't have a card. The, no, the thing is, what they, what they can do is they say, uh, you have all this music here. Do you have proof of purchase? Yeah. And I can say yes, but they're not allowed to check my computer or, or, or my, my apartment or my, my house for that. But they can issue a warrant that I have to go and show it to the police. And if I don't have it, um, it might be very expensive for me. Um, it could go into the five or six digit numbers for fines and uh, not paid licenses, license fees. So it's, um, and we have to make sure or we promote to be honest with the music, but still, I know some people that, well, they're buying, especially when, when there were records on, on the market, they bought 15 records, a group of people, and one guy was using this for two weeks, then he passed the 15 records on to somebody else, then they passed the records on to somebody else, and they didn't use it. Well, only one guy used it at a time, but 15 people used it. Well, that's okay if it, it, it's only no, being used by one person at a time. No, if, that's, that's, no that's not okay. Um, it, it, well, wait a minute. If, if, if you have, you're talking about a physical 45 record, not a copy, but you're, the the one record that you purchased and you give it to somebody and now they're going to use it. What's wrong with that? Well, technically, it's legal, but morally, no, not so. I, I I don't know what it's like now, but I I was involved with the game and negotiations in, back in the very early '80s, and we had the same issue because we were not not German; we were a Canadian club. And I was buying the equipment. I got a PNR grant from the Canadian military. So I bought the Square Dance equipment, Square Dance records, and filled the record box and bought new records all the time for the club. But that was on behalf of the Canadian Armed Forces. So the actual permit and license belonged to the Canadian Armed Forces. And as long as it was done by a member of a Square Dance Club or as part of the Square Dance Club, which was a joint Canadian Forces German club, we had no problem with licensing. The problem was if I could take those records and do it as a Canadian, but as a member of the Canadian forces, but a German caller could not take those records to another dance 
even though he, he called for our club, unless I was there, I could take him. If I was there, he, he was on mine, but that's who the records belong to. They didn't belong to me. They belonged to the, and that was the only way we could swap them. And we did get checked on that once. And that was game. And that was back when they said, okay, do you have your music association card? Yes, we did have that. It was inside the record box. And it was says, okay, well, who's the Canadian forces member there? And it was a different caller calling. And I put my hand up. I said, yes, that's me. I came up and did it, you know, but that does happen. I've got checked with SOCAN once. I've never been checked by BMI ASCAP, but I have heard of the other callers have, and I've never been checked here in Australia. Um, Hector, well, the sentence before that, Gamer has started a new game uh, a couple of years ago. You have to license copies. So if you digitize a record, a 45 on vinyl, if you make a copy of that, a digital copy, you have to license that with GEMA. And um, in general, it's not generally it's not very expensive, but if you have a thousand, rec a thousand copies, it still goes into money. Yeah. ECTA uh, negotiated with uh, GEMA that all ECTA members have that fee paid by ECTA. And um, the, initial, the initial purchase of that license was a five-digit number, yeah. some 20,000 euros which we paid to have the licensing of all the copies we use. Um, and each year we have to fill out, a, we've, we've added so many copies and act of paste that. So this is something we do. And, um, but in general, we in Europe seem to have we seem to have uh, a better ethics than other countries, but still there are people here uh, that act not very ethical in that uh, in that sense. They take, they buy music and they share it. Um, they sell their computer with the with the digital records on it, and um, they they don't worry. There are those, but that they're not that not that many, as I suspect by sure. what I hear that there are in the United States. Uh, Mark, you had a question for Mike. I'm not sure which Mike you were referring to. There's three of them here. Uh, for Mike Sikorsky. There. Um, okay, back when I went through uh, your caller school. Yes. Uh, you gave us some free music correct I, so now my question i keep all of re, i got receipts in pdf format on my laptop with my music for all the music i purchased so if for some i'm just wondering what would happen if for some reason i got checked like they're talking about somewhere what would happen when they asked about the songs like i got from you that uh I weren't purchased were given to me by the producers because I've gotten songs from a few different producers for free. It depends on, uh, uh, first of all, you've led into a question that Chris asked and never got answered because he was referring to the caller lab licenses. Okay. So let's talk about the status of licenses as uh, within the United States. The caller lab license is a broadcast license. And that is a license to use the similarity to the lyrics and the melody. I'm a songwriter, so I know all these rights. It is a right to that. Now, if you if that is in a square dance record that is produced, there's now a copyrighted thing called a phono record. So for that, for for uh, Bob Elling or anybody to put a piece of music out on their label, they own the phono record, but they have to pay the mechanical rights to use the melody and the lyric on that. Now, when I, I have to do the same thing. So every piece of music that I have on map, and that's the only thing I gave away was, uh, was music on my label. I personally bought the mechanical license 
on all of them. I personally paid for the, all of that music to be produced. Therefore, I own the phono record. Therefore, I have the absolute right to give that away. Now, in terms of somebody checking, there was another, uh, I think Guido addressed this. In terms of checking, they can ask you if you are licensed and you can say yes, but they don't have the, the police powers to shut you down. They have to go through legal channels to do that. And I have never heard of anything like that since ASCAP and BMI back in the day were, were, were threatening people with lawsuits. And when they threatened the Boy Scouts for playing music without paying for royalties at their campouts, they all their organizations backed off really quickly because Congress was getting involved. So what practically has happened in terms of Caller Lab, the licensing, is you belong to that organization. We have a broad, we have a blanket license through that organization to use the the lyrics and melody in live performance. So you can do that with any music I gave you, any music, any square dance music you buy. What isn't, for instance, is if a round dance leader buys a piece of music, because they all, they almost always use stuff they've heard on the radio. They have the broadcast right, but they have not paid for the right to use that phono record in performance. So far, I don't think there's enough money to stay for anybody to sue them or confront them. They'd rather just get the organizations to pay license fees and they make more money that way. That's practically speaking. Happened in Canada. I know, I remember back in SoCan in, I think it was 87, I got involved with that because they'd come up with this system of you had to keep a track of every song you use the number of dancers that were at each dance and the number of times that song and the number of times how many dancers were on the floor for that song. That's what they wanted for counting. And it, it was some kind of absolutely ridiculous formula. And we ended up negotiating uh, because for some callers, it meant they would be paying something like 18 to $20,000 a year for other callers. If you only called one or two dancers or you were a, a brand new caller, it meant you're paying something like 200 dollars a year just for your SOCAN license and we well, that, that's the that's exactly the kind of nonsense that uh, resulted in caller lab negotiating yeah the and we did, ASCAP license yeah we did the same and I think we negotiated it down to we paid 65 dollars a year that was for everybody that covered your production license your your music license your use license everything else with the exceptions of being paid to do a an event within a festival or within another event that had a whole different you know those are different things, but it, it worked out well. And most countries have similar types of arrangements like that, as far as I understand. I went on for a while, Mel, and what happened was the way I got the story, and I've got a third and fourth hand, but that became so enormous that it cost more money for them to audit all of that stuff and total it than it did for the money they were making. You all, in terms of practically speaking, it's important to know the laws, of course. That's why I went over the difference between the broadcast license and the phono record and who has the rights to that and how you get it. But practically speaking, follow the money, find the reason. That's why we're doing these licenses. Um, and for instance, we have three performing rights or organizations in America. We have BMI, ASCAP, and we have so uh, not SOCAN. What's the other one? I can't think of the name. Well, there's EMI maybe. Uh, no, there's a third performing rights organization and the wrote, word was going around for a while that Neil Diamond signed with them so we can't use any Neil Diamond. CSAC? CSAC. Isn't it CSAC? CSAC, thank you. And he signed, Neil Diamond signed there. And I had to explain this to, to everyone. In fact, I explained to the whole Caller Lab board and anybody else who would listen. Neil Diamond can sign with any in he has to, there's a resignation period it's like november and december every year he resigned i believe from bmi and then he joined csec so his newest project that he put out a few years ago 
we cannot we are not licensed to use any of his music and performance we can't get uh, so no there are our licenses don't cover that Neil Diamond can change his current affiliation but he cannot change the affiliation of previously published product so all of this stuff we know and love is still with BMI song sung blue sweet Caroline and all that we can still use that music because it's which performing rights organization owns the rights to collect the money on that some uh, some people are are uh, still confused and and you were trying to clear that up just now about the uh, about how the copyrights work in general with the with the idea that there's a there's a bundle of different rights and we've negotiated uh, licenses to some of those things uh, and uh, music producers uh, license uh, other rights and uh, and there's the difference between the mechanicals and and the performance of those and so on uh, so uh, in uh, April uh, on the uh, on the Don Beck uh, on the Don Beck show <laughs> the uh, the uh, earlier on the uh, on this day uh, uh, zoom uh, thing uh, in April I'm scheduled to give a uh, uh, sort of a copyright for square dance callers basics uh, presentation um, I don't know anything about how it works in Europe so I have to I have to do my own research between now and then uh, but uh, uh, but maybe we'll be able to help clear some of that up at, at that time, I hope. I thought what's interesting is CSAC is still called, well, formerly known, but now Society of European Stage Authors and Composers. That's where the abbreviation comes, but now it's a pro, a for-profit U.S. organization. But they still kept the name or the acronym, even though it's not European. Very strange. <laughs> Uh, there were European songwriters that went over there yeah. and founded their, their own rights organization. Uh, it's an American organization founded by predominantly German uh, songwriters. Yeah. And um, yeah. now they're open for almost everybody, but back then they went their way. Yeah. Anyway, I, I put a little blurb there, which um, it's from Tune Registry, but it's about performing rights organizations in the states. It gives you the names, what the what the organizations are in general, and if you need more information on it, by all means, uh, look it up. But um, Caller Lab has a lot of information on BMI and ASCAP. I know the Canadian Callers Association had a lot of information on SOCAN and uh, ECTA, probably still does because they're notorious for keeping good records and notes on uh, game and what the requirements are for your areas so have a look in the areas you are and uh, see what are the requirements make sure you don't violate them as to music producers um a lot of caller schools a lot of big events like we were running one here in the blue mountains last year which unfortunately got canceled but everybody that signed up we still send out the book, the note package and all that, as well as the music producers. We got a hold of them because I think there was 20, I think it was 20 or 22 new pieces of music from various record producers around the world that had given us a bunch of new music for the school, for the, for the candidates at the school, for those that were in attendance. And they said, yeah, by all means, we've committed to it. That was fine. So we, we they were still allowed to have all that music. But if you are involved in anything that does that at a caller school, just what we did is put the list of what music is being given away for free by the producers as part of their advertising, but put that list in there because most people keep the books and the records. And if not, it's just a simple sheet record of what has been given to you. And that will do as a receipt or proof of receipt. If they want to take you to court over it, I'm quite sure you'll be able to subpoena every caller or every person that was there at the uh, music association's expense to attend because they have to pay for that and uh, they can produce the proof for you. I have not heard of any of this checking going on in the last say 10 years. No, neither have I, I haven't. And it's all about follow the money, find the reasons. So it's important uh, to, to observe the legalities. Uh, when you share a piece of square dance music it, you know they're doing it because it's it's eight nine ten dollars a piece now but you're denying a sale from from a producer and 
I mean, total it up. If they're selling that for $10 and they sell 25, that's 250. Um, maybe Tony gets a deal, but when I check the website where all the square dance producers are going, it's $430 per piece of music. So yeah. they're losing money on every single one they put out. And if you want to lose more money and possibly go out of the business and quit, I know because of my illness and everything, my label's dormant. I haven't put anything out for a while. That's what's the more and more and more of that's going to happen. That's the damage of the of this giving away music. You can call it piracy, but basically it's somebody trying to be nice, giving music to somebody else. Yeah. It's not okay to go to a bank and rob it so you can give the money to someone else. That's the, that the, the problem with uh, stealing uh, recordings is people don't think they're stealing because they're just giving something away. When, when you go and rob a bank, you take something away from the bank. When you just copy a record uh, and give it away, you don't, in, in, in terms of several people, you don't steal because you just double. But what they don't see is that the producer doesn't sell that record anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a good, a good example would be, uh, you know, if like Bob's put out a lot of uh, good music lately on Riverboat, I could easily post the MP3 Riverboat here in chat and say, oh, this is a new piece of music by Bob and you could download it. I wouldn't do that. What I do is, you know, this is Riverboat 1125 or whatever it is, contact Bob at this site to get it. And then I play it so you could hear it. Or you could go to that site and you could hear a snippet and decide whether you want to do it. Unfortunately, as Mike said, it's a lot of people, they bought it. Oh, and they're being nice. And here it is. And that's what I mean by it's not intentional piracy. It's unintentional, but you've got to be aware of it's, it's not ethically correct. Anyway, it sounds like you've got a, uh, a lot of interest in the topic coming up, Chris. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, hope so. <laughs> There's it's there it's uh, there there's enough there's enough things going on that people can get uh, confused um, and then of course uh, you know like you've discussed here some people don't understand the sort of the the basic uh, morality of uh, uh, you know of what's going on under underlying that the oh the other uh, a place that it's starting to appear uh, where it's uh, where I know some people are starting to get checked. Uh, is uh, and I'll and I'll be talking about how all this works too. Is when they try to post uh, videos of square dances on YouTube, and so we'll be we'll be talking about uh, about how that works as well, because that's uh, one of the uh, one of the areas where uh, automation uh, basically allows them to uh, check and come after you, and you can actually get in. Uh, uh, you're, uh, to, to make a long story short, you're back in the old days of an unlicensed of unlicensed <laughs> territory with tremendous fees, uh, uh, potentially. I've deleted quite a few videos that I used to post uh, on YouTube of us, me, me, just me and my wife going to dances, and I'd video her out before I was before I learned to dance and she was dancing. I did a bunch of recordings of her out there on the dance floor dancing and my phone picked up the music and the caller calling and everything and i would get a uh, copyright uh compliant complaints or however they say it on youtube so i'd end up just deleting the video off of there oh ah, well i think mike hit the nail on the head it's very expensive for them to do it. I mean, if legally and technically, if they wanted to, they could audit every single caller. There's a process by doing it to see what they have and what they do all around the world. But the logistics and the administrative nightmare would be on them to do that. And then they, there's the proof of intention. And quite frankly, going against, let's say, um, Yolanda, you've been calling what? About a year now since you started doing gigs on your own? Like doing tips and brackets on your own. I I'm strictly a guest caller. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's been about a about a year, and now you're performing. So if they went after somebody like Yolanda, or they went after, you know, a mom and pop group that's got maybe 
two squares of people that have been going in it's at or an old folks home and whatnot and they started going after them and auditing them it would be like mike was saying when they decided to the boy scouts it would be so unpopular and so logistically damaging for the reputation that movement would be to shut it down and that would actually do more harm to the music industry than anything else but i was don't... told that as long as the club had the license or the caller had the main license then as long as you're a trainee you, that yeah you're you okay. can perform in well in canada i don't know about the states but in canada if i was calling a dance and i asked you to do a guest tip at a dance that i was calling you could call under my license as long as i had the piece of music that you were using Right. Well, that's uh, one more. Yes, Mark. I think I heard the answer before, but I'm not sure. Uh, basically, somebody asked me uh, to make them a CD. Mm -hmm. And because they where they go on vacation somewhere back east, uh, there's no callers in their area. And they usually try and take every everybody dance they go to, they dance to CDs. And they asked me to make him a CD. So I told him, okay. And I made him a CD. Was that legal or not legal? That one you'd, I'd, I'd have to defer that one, uh, especially to BMI and ASCAP, because if you're making, as I understand it, if you're making a CD as a caller for them to listen to you, that's fine. If you're making a CD for them to actually have people dance to, like go to a club or a non-caller dance, that's a whole different ball of worms because you're performing something that you've got the rights to, but they're actually, if they've got, you know, a, a donation at the door, they're charging money to use that performance. I, um, I don't know if that would be covered in your performance license or not. I do music that I have and I own and I perform. And whenever it goes out, I've done a few of these for a couple of callers or a couple of clubs that are just, um, tape or recording clubs learning to teach that's done under the teaching but whenever i go i also call for that club periodically which is how i get around that because it's part of my performance and my training which is reinforced so it's just an extension activity i still own that music they can use that music because it's part of my training getting up to that point because there's teaching tapes i don't know how that would work in the u.s i don't know how that would work in europe i can tell about europe Hi. In, in Europe, the um, the organizer of an event has to pay GEMA. Yeah. So I, as a caller, don't have a license um, to do anything. I need somebody who is organizing an event and is paying GEMA, and then I can perform my music. Um, in general, this is the same in the United States, but. BMI and uh, Callab has arranged with BNI and SCAP that the callers do have that license so that the clubs are off the hook. Well, that, that's right. But uh, you have to uh, you have to be there in person on the premises in yeah. order to, to do. That's what a performance is. You can't give yeah. somebody a recording and say, well, you well, first of all, you can't give somebody a recording. That's pretty much the end of the story. Uh, so that's a one. So you violated copyright by making the recording, uh, and then when they play it, they're they're violating additional uh, copyrights um, themselves. So that's uh, act actually completely illegal and on for for both parties. <laughs> okay, so that's a no no. Don't, I won't ever do that again. Well, if you own the music, if you are the music creator, you're the you're the you own the copyright on the music. And it's your original music that you that you wrote and produced and recorded, and you can do whatever the hell you want with it. No, these were songs. I, these are all songs I've bought from other record producers. No, that's just that's just like saying to somebody, "Hey, uh, I like that Fleetwood Mac album. Can you give me a copy of that?" And then you make a, an illegal copy of it, and then they take it to a party uh, where they where they do a public performance of it, and so that you've both violated two different uh, copyrights. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reality in, in with that mark is. You can record it and you can give them the audio track of you calling as long as they can't pick out the melody line. So you can give them the choreography to move to, but you can't give them the music. Okay. Which kind of defeats the purpose in the first place, I think. Um, that, that's the thing. When, when they buy a CD or a tape or whatever, 
uh, or whatever carry it is, um, they can play that. If the um, if if the the sale is including the right for public performance, and uh, a lot of stuff in Amazon when you buy an MP3, that's not licensed for public performance. Yeah. So when you as a caller buy, uh, I I know the um, policies from for Amazon for Great Britain, and I know it from Germany, and when you buy an MP3, it's not licensed for public performance. It's probably the same in the States because Amazon has the same regulations all over the world. Right, yeah, no, uh, that, that's the, the, the general rule of, uh, is that uh, performance is, a, is, a, is one of the copyrights that the, uh, that, that, uh, the people who own the copyrights own. And, and so, yeah, if, you, if, you just, if you're just at a party Right, and uh, and there's all kinds of technicalities and whatever about what constitutes a public performance. But you'd be surprised. For example, a private party in your home uh, might constitute, depending on who's there and whatever, could constitute a public performance. But certainly, you know, a, a party that random people are invited to, or a, you know, an event of some kind, a square dance, or just uh, any kind of a, a a youth dance at a church, for example. Um, things like that. Those are those are those are performances, and the, and uh, the default uh, the the normal thing is that the venue has to be licensed. Um, the the thing with callers being licensed instead of venues is a weird thing that we managed to work out uh, with BMI and ASCAP. But uh, that that's why they went after the clubs first. And and uh, but but it, it doesn't matter if it's square dance music or other music or, or what have you. It's it's you're just not allowed to play music in public for people. That's why if, if there's, there's a radio going in the in the side room at the at the car repair shop and you're in the waiting area and you can kind of hear it drifting in from the uh, from the other room. That's a performance that has to be licensed. So, I mean, it's just basically you, you can't do anything. <laughs> music in the elevator. You just drive around in your convertible, uh, having the music blaring out of the speakers. That's a public performance. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope that nobody, uh, I hope that nobody on the road he overhears anything coming out of my car and thinks it's a public performance. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it is 11:40. Uh, I'm more than willing to leave the session open, but I'm going to have to head out. Uh, I'm on grocery duty today. My wife has just finished cutting the lawn outside and trimming the, the hedges. So I think I'm uh, probably better go in and say hi to her. Um, but if you'd like to stay in chat, by all means, do so. Um, if, if not, I can shut the session down. Uh, if you guys do want to stay in chat, I'll make one of you the host of the session.